<laughs> uh, Obama is terrified of Pakistan. It's his most feared country in the world. And Ali takes great pride in that. So we welcome Ali, who just got his citizenship into Australia, knowing that about his background. <laughs> Why is Obama scared of Pakistan? Obama scared of Pakistan because he is he too afraid of reality. He's just... <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> the rest of the world is real as well. What right? are you like, talking the about? The only places that aren't real is France and, I don't know, Ireland when you go there and you're like, oh, I thought there'd be more leprechauns here. <laughs> yeah, what, what is... What, explain that. <laughs> Man, I've got, I've got with this one story for you. So I just came back from Pakistan and I met this one guy who lived for about eight months under occupation of Taliban. This guy was intense. Like, it was a life-changing experience for this guy. <laughs> That is real. I will team that. Come on, guys. Okay. We were all sitting there going, Nah, it's not that real. What are you talking about? Well, I know this guy that was there for eight months who lived under the Taliban. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. first sentence in this delightful story. Yeah, everyone shuts up after hearing that. <laughs> yeah, 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 and that's just the beginning. Because, like, that's not even a big problem for this guy. He literally saw people get slaughtered on the street. Like, he was telling me once he knew this one singer who lived in his neighborhood. This guy owns a hotel in one of the areas of Pakistan where Taliban was in control. So one of the singers that lived near his house, she literally got slaughtered in front of the whole community for being a singer in the past. So this guy has seen some really grotesque, dreadful things in his life. Robbie, can we just play uh, Jerry Seinfeld opening to Seinfeld? <laughs> we this, will. This, this Not is... a lot funny about that one. Uh, <laughs> is there? That's really quite It's horrific. a mood set. I don't know. I think yeah. the music will work, yeah. <laughs> it's we'll, a mood set. We'll try. Setting. We'll try, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but but there's a uh, happy this is the ending. Problem. This is the problem with having Ali as a friend when you go to parties. This is what we're trying to convey to everybody out there. That yes, he's the most interesting man you know when you're in a group of people that you know. But as soon as as soon as he started telling that story, I think everybody had that realization that thousands of people are gonna hear this. Holy shit, how do we respond to this? <laughs> Yeah, it's such a yeah, you come back with like Now the that is a thing. first world problem. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. Good you're one. You're right. You're right. You got us. Yeah. Ali, continue. We're so sorry. <laughs> no, but there's there's a good ending to this cuz like All right, all right. Yeah, let's hear it. So while this guy was under Taliban occupation, he obviously hated these guys. And then eventually the Pakistani army took over the region. And when they did, this guy became friends with a lot of the commandos that were conducting the operation because he had a hotel there and everyone was staying there. So he became friends with these guys. So one time the army people took him to, on a helicopter ride where they were getting information out of a Taliban commander. And now he didn't know what to expect. He just thought he was a bystander just looking at what's happening. So they were doing their own thing, usually like Hollywood, but more real. And so, <laughs> so they were like getting information out of him. And once they were done... They, while the helicopter was flying, they decided to just throw him off. And before doing that, they looked at this guy who they knew was under Taliban occupation for all this time. So he probably had some feelings against them. They asked him if he wants to push this guy off the helicopter. That's awesome that that is their version of Americans in the South going, you want to shoot the buck, Sean? Can I do it? Psh, yay! <laughs> and this guy <laughs> was... Mo real, didn't they? Yeah, getting, definitely yeah, more real. He's proven it. Pakistan more real than the rest of the world. <laughs> That's why Obama's scared. And he was super excited about pushing this guy over. <laughs> and he does. He pushes this guy over, and it's the best moment of his life. I was hanging out with this guy. Can you imagine a guy who's been through all of this while hanging out with you at that point? You're sharing a dinner, and he's sharing this story with you. You're just going, man... I have never seen anything like that in my life. I'm you sitting next to a murderer right now. <laughs> so he was incredibly happy with that. And you were sitting there uh, having the same reaction that we are now of going, that, oh, did you? No, I that was is, being, I was being okay. a dickhead because I was living in first world for a very long time. I was just looking at him like, that is too insane. Why would they want to do this? And this guy just looks at me and says, why shouldn't they do it? <laughs> and oh at God. that point, I was like, all right, fair enough. This guy has a point. He has seen people get slaughtered. Mm. Was that the end of the conversation there? Or were you able to shift gears in a non-clunky way? Or was there kind of a, huh, and then you just hear that 
sound of scraping cutlery that gets really echoed and <laughs> it's like that. And it kind of stops your brain from working even more because your ears are... It's, it's really like being in a special school at that moment where somebody's saying something horrific and then in the background there's people going, My ears are cut, you put me. There's terrible problems happening at the same... Sorry, my microphone was out of the way. I don't even know if any of that was recorded. But did yeah, you hear well. me, Ali? Did, did you yes, I did. I did. And the fact, the fact is, while I was listening to this, I was super interested. But at the same point, after that story, it's a wrap-up of the conversation. You're just thinking, what can you say after this? There is nothing that's going to live up to the reputation of... What am I going to say? What am I going to say to well, this guy? Well, there's a whole oh, podcast yeah. to come <laughs> from that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, there could be, yeah. Does anyone have anything to say to that? Or are we going to do that cutlery moment on the pod? I'm going to go cutlery. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what we can say. I'm scared, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit worried about, about what I can say there. Don't be scared. It's the reality for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being that's, scared. that's why I'm That's scared. the scary part. Yeah, yeah. This is. is a third world problem, not a first world problem. So <laughs> yeah. think, of, think of yourself as a third world man. How do you react to this? So yeah. I'd like to advise every pod listener now, just as a huge juxtaposition, to look up Nigahigas. First World Problems on YouTube. <laughs> Just remember that story and then go on to like his amazing observations of people going, my hanky's already been blown. That'll um, that'll that'll lift your mood because none of us know how to do that at the moment. You, you oh, just try to realise that maybe empathy is a first world problem and just go along and laugh with the story. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I reckon that's true, man. Because this guy yeah. wasn't that. <laughs> this guy wasn't that freaked out about his own story. He, it was a normal day for him. Because it's again a third world. Pro- empathy is not a third world problem. Like the problems <laughs> in third world are way bigger than feeling sorry for someone else. But if, surely, if he's telling you the story of how he was put in a helicopter to go and like kill a Talibani member, it must have been significant enough for him to remember it as like a story to tell, right? Like, maybe for him even, it's, like, quite exceptional. Or do you think just on a daily basis he was doing that? Did, was he proud of it? He was sort of proud of it. He didn't want to say it out loud, though, but he was he, he felt proud of the fact that he killed someone who did slaughter people. So he was happy about the fact that one man down. Mm. And he was sort of annoyed with me for, like, being weird about it and saying that, <laughs> should they like there should be a court Why was there he should be jury you? there should be prosecution and he was just looking at me you have no idea what i'm talking about <laughs> you so, so like you had this so called first world problem as well of empathy it was just this guy who was just like proud of it yeah, I feel I'm like somewhere in between first world and third world because I never fit in in first world or the third world. So I guess I'm living somewhere in Russia, the second world. It makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense that you spent your entire life in Pakistan living in a bordered society where you were away from the worst of Pakistan, but you could still see it from your Arabian-style window. Out <laughs> yeah. And seeing all of this murder and mayhem happening downstairs while you were in there and you were thinking I've got to distract myself with something and that's why you are a Marxist Ali likes Marxism which makes heaps of sense that he that he (laughs) seems to kind of sympathise with Russia that he is a second world man I think that's true and to be and I'll tell you something else I have literally seen that through my window real third world problems (laughs) happening while I was just safe in my room this was during one of the riots, and I was looking through my window, and I saw these guys steal phones and cars. I was literally looking at them beating up random people, and I couldn't do anything. It's like, what can you do? You can't call the police. Those Why? guys were probably the police that were doing it. <laughs> oh, my God. And you want to be safe. You see that there is nothing else. You have to be a Marxist at that point, where this is just insane. <laughs> literally looking through the glass window towards hell. <laughs> and you go back and back, don't you? <laughs> and you love and it. And you wanted to live there. You wanted to go back. Ali, the rest of his family, had to convince him solemnly for a month to take up Australian citizenship. 
He saw that for years, went to a party where there was people that used to be terrorists that were security guards at this party that forced them to dance for three <laughs> extra hours when the party was scheduled to shut down and they all had to sit there going, oh, I'm having a good time for the next, <laughs> until 3 a.m. in the morning. Ali saw all that and went, and went yeah, like, you know what? Australia's not all it's cracked up to be. Yeah, I love this place. <laughs> well, we have to remember that Ali's house is in the shape of a cloud. That's and it's uh, almost a kilometre high up in the air. So, Yeah, he yeah. has a pretty good impact. I had a really good architect. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And you also... I remember once Ali saying that Arabian Princes is completely a fabrication of Disney, that it doesn't exist. And then we went down the whole checklist. We asked Ali, did you ever used to lie around in bed without a shirt on with puffy pants? He said, yes. Did you ever used to... Eat grapes that were handed to you by a servant. Ali had hundreds of servants in Pakistan, so obviously that was yes. Were you looking out at a really nice silken uh, curtain gently swaying in some Arabian desert winds? And he also had exactly that, that, that dome kind of window. Yeah, like that the all Aladdin. Happened. And then after all of that saying, it is a stereotype, man. It doesn't exist. <laughs> okay, so the grapes were good, so I want to have them grapes, and I can't be <laughs> getting them from the fridge all the time, so I had someone deliver it to me in my, in my room. I don't understand how that's a Disney theme song. That's real life issues where you don't want to get out of Third your air conditioned room you don't want to get out of your air conditioned room because it's burning outside and someone is handing you a a bunch of grapes. It's also rioting outside as well. <laughs> Ali, the Pakistani cartman. <laughs> yeah. It's true, though. All right, so we might move on to Goosebumps oh, now. Oh, thank God. What am I continuing? This is your oh, you story. forgot. Okay, that's fine. Let's move on to your story that's also about uh, very questionable genitals. Oh, yeah, that's true. Which this is, is good segue. Good segue, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because like, I didn't know that you were going to build this up, because I have a story about... Transgender, transvestite, yeah. I'm not exactly sure. So, okay, so the story starts, so this is when we were about 15. And um, so my friend one day comes to my house and says, dude, my phone just got stolen. Is this, in, this is back This home. is Pakistan, sorry. Yeah, this yeah. is To be clear, this is in Pakistan. <laughs> and um, yeah, and he's like, dude, my phone just got stolen. And I was like, oh, well, what's like, you know, that shit happens. Was it at gunpoint? He was like, no, a transgender stole my cell phone. I was like, wait. Well, like, that in itself is, like, a little fucked up. And then my first question was, which every... Which, okay, so... How old unfortun- are you? Uh, 15. Unfortunately, yeah. um, transgender people in Pakistan, they if essentially just end up in sex work. It's true. It's that's, sad, that's but it's actually, true. That's actually a really prevalent thing. It happens in America, too. Heaps of kids yeah, in... Yeah. Everyone moves to LA, and they end up doing sex work. I don't know exactly why. Why that's... would transgenders move to LA thinking they're going to make it? <laughs> two reasons. I blame Bruce Jenner. No, that's not, that's not because Hate of that. Man. It's not because of that. <laughs> it's two reasons. They're very trivial. And so you'll be like, that's retarded, but it's true. Um, don't try wh- retarded. So, I don't want to offend anyone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, no, that's all right. I, I, I did have a secret little giggle to myself when you said it. <laughs> um, I can't, I've got to stop saying that. But um, one, the... <clears throat> The welfare is, is is better, and to the weather. Why do transgenders need to be what? perfect? What? Are they clownfish, dude? <laughs> I thought you were gonna come with some profound argument, like, no, this is why it happens. The, the weather is good, man. So it that's is why for like every person, not just transgender. Yeah, there's heaps of homeless people in LA. Are you talking about why people move to LA? I'm just saying. I'm just saying, as an example, just as a side note, as a quick side note. Yes, heaps of people move to LA because the the welfare is better and the, the the weather's better so you're not freezing your ass off in New York or Idaho they go to yeah, LA there's a, a huge there's a huge thought, homeless population I, I just thought that this would be like specific to transgender people no no anyway, just, so, it, okay. just a segue that, no, the Jordan story knows. the story yeah. so um, so my friend comes up and he's like oh um, this transgender person stole my phone I was like were you trying to have sex with him <laughs> and he goes oh, I swear to god man I swear to god I wasn't <laughs> And I was, I was like, like, all right. Your first thought because, like, why of else? Of course you would on, be, though. Please. Fifth. Uh, okay, so, so, like, he just said, so I asked him, what, what the hell happened? And yeah. he was like, all right, so I was driving around this place known as Zamzama, which is, like, an elite shopping area. Um, it's kind of like, I don't know, George Street. Okay. Of, of 
the the place that I lived in. So he was like, I was driving, it was kind of late, and nobody was really driving, it was just myself, and then this transgender person just comes right in front of my car, I stopped the car, he asked me, um, can you give me a ride? Mm -hmm. And in normal situations, dude, in Pakistan, nobody gives anyone a ride, because like, you can never be sure. But anyways, so he said, all right, fine, sit in my car, and then he drives like literally a block or something, and the transgender person just says, stop the car, and grabs the phone that was next to him and just like bolts runs away right <clears throat> so now he comes to he's come he comes over to my house and he's like this is what happened i'm really pissed off i'm like man you know what shit happens in life you know just get over with it mm. but my driver um so don't pay me out for it anyone who can afford a car can also afford a driver so my driver was we live in a we, I'm not gonna pay. Who would pay that for that? It's mad. Dude, I get like it feels. It feels weird saying my driver was banging my maid. Dude, which anyone is a true says, story again for some other day. But what? Yes. Anyone and many, many other women as well. <laughs> In Any, my fucking he room. You see, yes, Ali's room is a sex dungeon. That asshole. Anyone and, says that that's that's like lame is lame. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just the that's the way the world is. You know what I mean? It's a nervous anyway. Story. So uh, my driver is just like he was kind of a, or at least he pre pretended to be a. Bad Badass, right? So he just says, "We're gonna find out who this is, and we're gonna get your phone back, right?" And to like a fifteen-year-old kid who just got his phone stolen, I was like, "Yeah." That's so. Blah. Not only do I get my phone back, I also get to show that I'm a boss. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So anyway, so what they do is they go down to the um, the police station, and the guy that was like the police guy where there was mates with my driver, so they just take down some details, and then they come back. I was like, "All right, that's it." So if they tell us, then we know. Next day. My driver says, all right, we're going to go into the neighborhood and we're going to hunt for this guy, this, this transgender person. So, I was so like, Pakistani. I was like, are you like, <laughs> is that, <laughs> yeah, that, I agree. <laughs> that is, yeah. Taking the law into your own hands. Yeah. Did he have one of those like, like Allah Habibi knives, like kebab, this big like yeah, knives to cut? No, he had like, a, I think he had a gun though. But anyway, <laughs> um, so, so, okay, Way so we go back to the elite shopping, the George Street. Now, unlike George Street, just behind that shopping street is like a massive slum Six. yeah yeah. it's a slum right yeah, yeah. i've never been inside that slum i've been like my mom had a fucking beauty parlor there and i hadn't ever visited that slum like wow yeah literally like, nobody nobody like sort of goes in there so this was my first time going into the slum so i go there it's still a lot like sydney though because <laughs> right behind george street is redfern <laughs> yeah yeah kind, kind of like that actually so we're in the redfern of pakistan now <laughs> Well, I guess yeah, that's true. Yeah. That. Just pretty much the same standard of housing, lot less murals of Martin Luther King. God, yeah, how does this go? That's close. Cool. Cool. Right, go, go. Yeah, so we we go into the slum, and at this point, I'm sort of like freaking out because I'm not in my normal environment. And then my driver and my mate, they're just like literally banging on houses and saying, "Where's that dude who stole stole my phone?" Yeah, and then eventually. What I realized was that a, something that I didn't know was that transgender people in Pakistan, they live in communities because they get outcasted by their families. So they're literally all pooling in and living together in slums. And there's like oh, a no. head transgender dude who like takes care of everyone else. How incredible is that, Miss Love? That, they all, that they all band together. Yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And like, so anyway, so a we, city so the of, guy, a city of, that is, sorry, that is just miss love. The reason why he missed out on that, because you could see from his face, no, I did how hear that. I did hear that. incredibly interested he was. No, the reason why he's lying now, I'm not lying. The I reason heard that. why is because he wrote to me, um, I'll close with the black eyed piece again. <laughs> Thanks for ruining it. I was trying to, what a, I'm just saying, like, I'm you sorry, thought that was an essential information. Yes, it's the, it's about the, you missed the peak of the story. It's in, this. it's inductive to the, uh, <laughs> flow of the pod. The song yeah. starts, the right, pod, think, song ends the pod. I think this is a long And I wanted to communicate that without being like, stop the pod for a sec. That's fine, that's fine, that's God fine. damn you, John. I think this is a long story, so I'm going to no, go, no, like... No, 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 keep I'm, going, I'm going, going, like, going. I'm going to continue. I'm going to wrap this up. So, all right. So, we so go... it was so an it, army of trannies. Yes, essentially. Yes. And, like, and so now, the head the head tranny, right, um, <laughs> he's like, story. come over to my house and let's talk this out, like, Whoa. like normal human beings, yeah. which was insane that this guy was making sense and we were, like, the real assholes just, like, knocking on people's <laughs> doors. Anyway, so I've, I'm, like, completely freaked out by this point, right? So then... We go inside his house and look, dude, like it was easily like I go into this house. He was 
literally from like the lowest strata of society, right? You could see how poor they yeah, were. Poor Give guy. us a description of the house. So the, the house was like people were coming out. It like it looked like a small place, but people were coming out from everywhere. Like there were people were like literally was it a sleeping tent? on cupboards and shit. Was it a tent? No, I kid you not. Was it a solid structure or a tent? No, it was a solid structure. Okay, it okay. was like, it was just really old, but it yeah. was a solid structure and they were like just way too many people living in a very cramped location and like, you know, just... It was tough, it tough was weird, life. man. It was weird. Anyways, so so we sit down there, and now I'm just telling my friend, dude, it's a fucking phone. Can we just go home? Let's like, this is not worth. <laughs> was it, it even an iPhone? Was it no, this was like ages Nokia. ago. So it was like a Nokia. <laughs> it was a 3310. Jesus, that he was going, no, <laughs> I need something to occupy my time while I'm driving snake. back. I'm not going with that snake too. I think yeah. I think I think the phone cost about ten thousand rupees. That's what two dollars, which is about um, yes. like I don't know. It's uh, like $2. How much 30. is that? That's about one hundred and twenty dollars or something. Okay. Right? All right. So definitely and, not worth dying over. Uh, yeah. Nobody's it's dying not, here. Really they, they, they weren't trying to kill us. Okay. They were literally harmless people that we were bugging. Okay. Anyway. okay. So anyway, <laughs> with so, a gun. So now I tell my driver, dude, you're my fucking driver. I say we bounce from here. This is like we're invading someone's privacy. We we're not welcome here, and we're just being cunts right now. Anyways, <clears> so we go back. And then my friends, the policemen that they eventually went to last night, they called them and said that we've got the guy. Just come over to the police station. So we go there. And now this guy is like, he's clearly been beaten for like past five minutes. Oh, God. Right? And he's just there. And then like, they're all trying to act tough. And now at this point, I'm like, this has gone way too far than yeah. anyone should. Anyways. And my friend is just like, oh, yeah, you fucking asshole. Right? Like, just a cunt of a man. Who, by the way, now lives in Melbourne. So he's amongst you. Whoa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Pauline's got the right idea. Right? Yeah, Pauline's got the right idea. In this <laughs> case, right. Pauline has got the right idea. Um, <laughs> he's talking change for once. <laughs> I love how that, that, so now, that has to be the number one phrase uttered by any Pauline Hanson supporter. Talking sense for once. <laughs> Talking sense for once. All right. So then, and then like what happens is that the fucking police guy asks this transgender person to take off his or her clothes. What? To get butt naked. And oh I was like, God. and I'm telling my friend, like I'm too afraid to ask the police guy, but I'm telling my friend, dude, is this really fucking necessary? Right. Mm. We don't need to like, anyway, so the guy, cause he's afraid he takes off his clothes, right? And then I don't know what the rules are for transgender, what his penis was. I obviously didn't like, I looked, I went outside because it was just too much for me. Yeah. So then um, I saw, so I didn't look, but apparently I was overhearing them and the guy, the police guy was saying, you're not a transgender, you're a dude. And the guy was basically, essentially the transgender person was saying, yeah, but I don't get boners. I don't know how that got to do. I don't know, right? But for some reason, this is where this gender politics gets so complicated for me. It's like very, yeah. So what? Yeah, yeah. So for I don't know what it was, but the the, like the the transgender person just wasn't meeting the criteria for the police guy. That's essentially what was happening to be a trans. Anyways, but that was irrelevant because we were there for the fucking phone. (laughs) So so we asked him, "Where's the phone?" Or the police guy asked him, "Where's the phone?" He's like, "I sold it." And he's like, "Um, "So now you need to give money for that phone." Now I'm saying, dude, how much money does this person yeah. have? Can yeah. Now, anyway, so they, they're, he's like, I don't have any money on me. So he's like, well, call your parents or something. So then, like, I don't know, parents or something, like supposed parents. I don't know if they were really the parents or not. They come in and then they sit down and the police guy says, your fucking kid stole this guy's phone and you need to pay up. And he's like, how much was the phone for? And he goes, 10000 And then I literally see them like teary and just saying, we don't have that much money. Oh. And we're so, and they're like, how much money do you have? And they had like 3,000 rupees, which is like, I don't know, $40 or something. Third world problems. <laughs> Dude, this is... <laughs> Hashtag. Oh my Hashtag. God. That's... So, that's this, guy's, Sam, this guy's that's telling too you... too much. This guy's... Sorry. <laughs> sorry, dude. That, but, so, like, man. Newt yeah. Gingrich over here. here. Newt Gingrich. It's making me ball here. Ron Paul. The story's too much. It is a lot. It's very yeah. intense. And then, so and heavy. Then, like, we, have to, we have to leave in two minutes. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just... This is, this is <laughs> the end. Enough. Okay. This we'll is go, the we'll end. go till they drag us out. This, this is, is the end. So, and no now, at this point, I'm telling my friend, dude, just fucking leave the money. They obviously needed more than your rich ass needs it. Um, so... Mm. No, but he was like, he was being a dick. He was like, no, give me the fucking 3,000 rupees. So we take the 3,000 rupees, and I'm like, I just tell my driver, like... Let's just go home. We've, we've, we've done what we came here for. And then he goes to my house. He comes back over to my house and he says, bro, want to go for dinner? And I told him, can you just fuck off from my house? Right. So I just essentially kicked him out. Well, so that's the story. That's the story. So do they let, do they let him go? 
Yeah, yeah, they let him go after like getting uh, beaten and uh, yeah. embarrassed. That's crazy. Like, I don't know what the moral of that story is. Stories from Pakistan. Tell us about it. Well, well, weight of wars. Yeah, Ooh, weight of wars. I, I'm trying. Like, I'm thinking of like bringing back because those those Pakistani stories did well. Like, a lot of people really, really dig them. I don't understand why you don't think they would have. Your life is infinitely more interesting than anyone here whose most fascinating story is. Once me and my mate tried to jump over a creek, but I landed in it and broke me foot. <laughs> so you, you're just an idiot. Y- yeah, yeah, pretty much. Well, yeah, All of your stories. I went into a town full of transsexuals. Um, <laughs> uh, I know a guy that used to push over poor people on a bicycle for fun. I more or less knew... Pakistani Mr. Burns. <laughs> Dude, this story involves him, actually. So, oh, of course it does. So, so what happens is that... We're Can we d- name him? Yeah, yeah, his name's Atik. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is the, the most insane character. God, like, I have so many stories about him. Yeah. But, like, he is not a good person Clearly at all. Clearly not. Uh, but Pushing he is over like, poor people on a bike in a Jeep. Yeah. I can't imagine you being a Dalai Lama. But but he he is the most useful friend that you could ever have. I'll give you one example of how he's a shit person, but a nice person at the same time. Because he thinks that if he sees my parents, he has to give them a lot of respect. Mm. So this is what happens. I'm sitting behind. My mom and dad are sitting at the front. This is not the waiter story, but like it's just a good character analysis of this man. Uh, and we're driving. Uh, my dad's driving. And then I'm talking to him on the phone. And then his big-ass SUV with like guards at the back are right in front of him. And I just go like, oh, hey, man. Um, I can actually see you. Uh, my parents are... I'm just, I'm just driving up with my parents. Yeah. He stops his car, blocking the entire traffic behind him. He comes <laughs> over to us and he's just like, he goes up to my dad. He's like, oh, hi, 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 how are you doing? And my dad's just like, yeah, I'm doing good, man. But like your car is blocking the way. While he's doing this, I see his guards pointing guns at people that were <laughs> that were complaining and are now just shut because this guy has to come over to say hi to my parents. So it's, a, it's, it's good and bad. Like he's giving extreme amount of respect, but at the same time, he's a cunt. <laughs> Anyways, um, it's just like so. This is just like, uh, uh, dude. It's so third world richness is cartoonish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He happens to be very, very rich too. Um, but, but so this is, this is what happens. So we're sitting down. We're just chilling mm. at his house, uh, and and he gets a call, and it's his younger brother who is saying that he's had a fight with some guys, and they've kind of like. And he and they've like beat him up or something, and they're chilling at this little outdoorsy restaurant, and uh, and so now he just gets up and he's like, "All right, we're gonna go over and beat the shit out of these guys because they mess with my brother." Now in these situations, I'm just like, "Oh fuck, why do I have to be?" And so I'm just like trying to find an escape. But the thing is, if you want to like, and when I was younger, like I really really wanted to be, you know, f- social. Mm. So uh, if I said that I'm getting the fuck out of here that's like the most it's it's considered really really cowardly so mm. i just have to like somehow just shut up and somehow like find ways it's like but i'm like oh man but like don't you think this is gonna be bad because like there's gonna be cops over then he just looks at me he's like dude fuck cops he's just like he's just tupac at that point wow. so so anyways so now i'm just like i'm sitting at the i'm sitting in the car this time he didn't have his gods or anything and there's about five of us and we drive to this outdoor location it's kind of like you know if you're in liverpool or something in like a big garden there's people smoking uh shisha some people are having chips and then there's a table over there that's had that's like there's these four kids they were like a little younger than us too maybe two years younger than us so we so anyway so i'm just like i'm just like trying to lay low i'm chilling at the back so then what what they do is because they're trying to be like thugs and shit, right? They just like they just start showing like fucking shit. Who the fuck messed with my brother? Bullshit. I'm just like, holy shit. There's like there's a few families over there, too. So I'm I'm just like I'm trying to lay low. Um, so they don't they don't kind of realize that I'm part of this group anyway. So they go up to and then they finally locate these 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 four guys and they start beating the shit out of them. And uh and and everyone's just like looking and then what happens like the one of the waiters just comes up and he's like all right you've you've done what you have to do get the fuck out of here now and now this friend of this 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 friend of mine he's just like cuz he's like he's full of adrenaline at this point so he just goes like fuck you and like slaps the waiter right 
Fuck, such and cunts. And then, out of nowhere, around 40 to 50 waiters come out and start beating the shit out of my friends. This... You have too many surreal stories. <laughs> you are a walking Picasso painting. That's your life. And, and, and at this point, like, and, and they don't beat me because they don't, again, they don't realize that I'm part of this group because I wasn't beating the, the kids or anything. So um, anyway, but what happens is that now, dude, there's like 40 people. The guy who's like putting up chicken tikkas in the tundur has left it and is now like you know, playing his role. The guy who's Hell doing yeah. non is now also beating my friends. At one point, I just go like, so what I see is like one of my other friends, he's on the floor with like three waiters on top of him and there's one of the waiters just gets a chair and is about to hit him from the back. No. So now at this point, I'm just like, I'm like, holy shit, dude. Like this could really, because yeah, they're cunts, but they're sort of my friends. So I just go over and I push the guy mm. and then he falls over and mm. that's when they realize that I'm with them. Mm. And then I start getting my ass whooped too, <laughs> a little bit, um, but not not as a much. A little bit, and yeah, a little bit, because like I how, just, how much of an ass whooping? Bruises, broken bones? No, not even broken bones. Just like a few slaps here and there. And right. I was just like, and I was just like, so you were just a sideshow. Yeah, I was just a sideshow. You were the coleslaw to the fish and chips. Yeah, exactly. I was a coleslaw, and also like I was just I was kind of guilty with the whole situation. So I was just like, man, we kind of like maybe deserve this. Yeah. Um. So anyway, so then that happens and then and then like all of these guys are just extremely pissed i'm i'm pissed that why the fuck was i even here and and then we drive we drive over to like this huge group of friends and this this idiot friend of mine is still wants to like now what he wants to do is he wants to go back and beat the waiters mm. so he wants to get like more people so we just go over to this the this this different group who's supposed to be like real badasses and now at this point i'm just thinking like how to make an exit uh, he he goes over there and uh, and he says, and so so like he's fucking like he's bleeding and shit. So he just goes over there and was like, so they're just all like, what the hell happened? And he goes like, man, we just got beaten by forty waiters, and then they just start laughing their ass off. <laughs> it's it's so weird that yeah. story. <laughs> Keep going. I, he, I understand why. Yeah, he, they just like they're they're laughing their ass off. Yeah. and so so my friend just goes like. Can you? We've got to go and beat them. And he's just like, dude, you just got your ass booked by waiters. Just like this. That's that's the end of the night. Just call it a day. <laughs> this happened, and just be careful you don't do shit like this in the future. <laughs> oh, what a what a high to leave this on. Yeah. Give us more tales for Pakistan next week, please. I've got. To- I always think it can't get better, and it does. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll see you next week. See ya. Anyway, let's talk about the human version of a bulldog, your friend Adib, who is just a moron that just lucked into living a really good life. <laughs> yeah, so this is another story. Tales of Pakistan. Um, so- God, I love these. So much better than books and so much better than freaky stories. <laughs> None of them were freaky. All of P- Ali's stories are terrifying. Yeah. It's just his Saturday. This one's not terrifying, but this one's just like it tells you how affluence kills people. People. Just huh. um, in fact, like the reason why I'm doing this. Shout out to Gabe who came up to me. Gabe is just this guy that I work with, and he's also a listener of the pod. Does he have dreads? No, he doesn't have dreads. Does he aspire to be an actor? No, I think he just aspires to like get an apartment in Lyon. Where's that? In France. He's Italian. He's like he's actually a pretty cool dude. Um, but anyway, so he was he came up to me and he was saying I was listening to your uh, story about. Um, waiter wars and he was working out at the gym and he had to walk out of the gym because he was laughing that hard so oh any stories about third world rich people that have the intelligence of a monkey are always going to be great yeah. so because they can just get away with anything <laughs> yeah yeah so <laughs> and they shouldn't be they barely know how to write <laughs> Dude, he barely does. No, He's just like he doesn't know. know how to write. But so, so when he turned about what, eighteen, nineteen, because his parents thought such a colonial hangover, but they thought that anyone that goes to the UK to get an education is instantly great. Yeah, is instantly great. That's just like, and the requirement is just going to the UK. Yep. That is because, like, Makes back sense. in the day, that's where like 
fucking everyone went right because yep. like British subjects and shit. Anyway, so so his dad, his his parents are like, you've got to go there, but he doesn't like he doesn't study. He like he can't read, um, <laughs> so <laughs> so he goes to the UK and just gets this sham degree where he just pays off money and chills at his house the whole time for like three years. Mm. Um, like if you Google this uni, you can't find it. Please say that on his diploma it says PhD in Bullen. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that was because that'd be more accurate. But it, pro- it was some bullshit like bachelors of business administration, some shit like that. Yeah. So he comes back and then he's like, okay, so I'm gonna. Uh, what do I do now? So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a business. So, so what he does is he sets up interviews to hire people yep. these MBA graduates yep. that have like done shit in life have actually studied heaps but aren't as rich as this guy mm. so they're looking for jobs now so so he puts out like a news ad to hire an MBA graduate now we interview this MBA graduate who is definitely older than us <laughs> we aren't qualified to do anything and now we're just like sitting there like a bunch of friends just going like so what do you want to do in life? Like, <laughs> to this guy. <laughs> and, and he's just like, and he's, he's, cause he's had a job interview. He doesn't know who these fucking kids are. So he's like, <laughs> he's, he's behaving like he's talking to like the CEO of IBM. And like, the guys that he's interviewing it, him are infinitely dumber than he, him, him. Anyway, so then we, so we, so he hires this guy, but he doesn't know what the business does. So he just like so he gets like an office space, uh, and then he gets that MBA dude to come in every day. And the MBA dude at one point was just like, um, "Sir, what are we? Um, what what do we do? What are, what are we doing?" And mm. and because it's, a yeah, so because Adib didn't know the answer to that, he just goes like, <laughs> "What do you think we should do?" <laughs> and the guy is like, "Wait, so uh, I tell you what to do?" He's like, "Yeah, so that's your first job. You come up with a thing that we can do." Your first job yeah. is to set up a business <laughs> For as an employee. <laughs> <laughs> He's just got like a fucking office space. And then what happens like eventually this guy leaves because he's like i've got shit to do in life i i know i'm getting paid but this is not worth it like i went to fucking cambridge or some shit (laughs) this is the best part of this that this was during an economic downturn yeah (laughs) (laughs) no chance of this man being hired no Pakistan. Yeah. And it was better than hanging out with a deep. Yeah, it was definitely better. <laughs> He's like, he, he probably found it very difficult to get a job anywhere else. But, <sighs> but like that job was eating him because it wasn't a job. It was just him coming to office and just, just like every time he'd ask a question, Adib would just say, oh, if Adib was there, Adib would go like once a week <laughs> to this place. Uh, and that too at like 3 p.m. when he would wake up. Uh, uh, and so he so goes. It's just him in the hang in there calendar all yeah, yeah. week. But the only thing that Adib would do, this was his perform and measure of performance. He'd ask the guy, so he hired another guy to like make tea or some shit. So he'd <laughs> ask him, like, did the MBA guy come into work or not? And that was just the <laughs> the performance measure. <laughs> so so, it's so good. It's just Yilmaz, but with a billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so then, so then the guy quits, and Adib eventually gives up the gives up the office space because he's like, because he still doesn't know what he's gonna do. And by the way, this process is like eight months this isn't a quick (laughs) process and then and then like he just comes up and he decides i know what i'm gonna do in life he's like what are you gonna do man he's like i'm just gonna get like a shitload of cows (laughs) and sell their milk brilliant yes (laughs) so then so then he gets but why did he was there any sound logic behind this is cow milk rare in pakistan no 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 i'll tell you why it is because because the sort of uh, clan that he belonged to, I don't know much about like this, this the clan intricacies, um, but but like so one of the clans that he belongs to is like it was is known for selling milk, but they're also very ashamed of the fact that they sell milk. So if, when he came up with that idea, all of the other friends were just like, were, were asking him. Uh, oh, of course, because you're from that clan, you're going to sell milk. And he get really different. Well, that's not what I'm going to do. It's just like a profitable business. That's why I'm doing it. Anyway, so he buys cows. And uh, they're all in this fucking farm. 
uh, somewhere like an hour away from where we lived. Uh, and, and, and then like he got these cows and then every other day. So now his biggest problem was he would come up every day and just like, he wouldn't go to this place. The people working over there would tell him shit like, oh, the cows aren't getting pregnant. And then mm. he, he would say, oh, that was like his issue. And I was just, and I used to be, I used to, I, I, this was a bizarre issue. Like the cows aren't getting pregnant. How is that? An, like I lived in the city. I don't. Dude, we didn't have cows. <laughs> it's just such a farmland. So, so that was his biggest problem. And then he found out that the reason why they weren't getting pregnant was because he was fucking. Um, there was this disease that had spread <laughs> that just basically allows the cows not to get pregnant. So he would get these massive bulls, import them from like Australia and shit, and he'd think that yeah, the Aussie, the Aussie bulls are gonna get my cow pregnant, <laughs> and they would. <laughs> Anyway, and then so, so his, his, his business was a it was medieval peasant yeah. mind in the twenty first century <laughs> so with an inexplicable amount of money. So, so that so that this is the best. This is how this story ends. And so, so now he has like, but he's still getting these cows, and then eventually he figures out what this disease is, and then he starts to cure it, and then his parents changed his their mind about him. So his parents were saying, "We don't want you to live here. We want you to just move to Dubai." Um, so then he's like, nah, but I want to live here. Like, I've got this business now. They're like, nah, uh, just, just leave, go to Dubai. Uh, I don't think you're safe here anymore. Um, they had like this issue where like someone they knew got shot and they got really paranoid. So they were like, so he asked them, he was like, so what am I, what am I going to do with all the cows? Like, yeah, just, just leave them. So there's a bunch of cows <laughs> in a farm that are just, uh, cause he just went to Dubai and like, he just left. The cows, <laughs> and they were just 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 chilling in this farm. We're like, so what do we do now? And 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 he was just like, I don't know, dude. You're free, bitch. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> go in the middle of like a fucking city area. They're like free to go to the wild. Uh, <laughs> um, but I hear uh, that all of them got stolen and this. shit. Oh, oh, clearly, yeah. <laughs> well, they're like. They're Jersey cows, right? Yeah. They're very expensive cows in the middle of one of the poorest places on earth, in the poorest province on earth. I mean, in the, in the country, right? <laughs> and where he had to import truckloads of water to feed these yeah, cows. Yeah, yeah. Because, in a because place the, that's the, the, the city, desert. the city is the richest in the in the country, but it does not have a water supply, mm. or like there's too many people to depend on the existing water supply. So he would get water. And the other thing that I realized, big talking to him, he was saying that the other problem that he would face was that he'd get the milk, but then because it was so hot. That by the time he got, yeah, by the time the milk actually reached the people that were supposed to sell it, it would it would just go bad. So then he started putting in ice. But then when he when the milk would go to the people, they'd say, "Oh, you're fucking with us. You're mixing water into milk." So just like his business didn't work out, and then eventually (laughs) he had to abandon it. Um, So that's a snapshot Uh, of how many adventures of a (laughs) deed. Yeah, the many adventures of a (sighs) deed. This is great. This is, uh, I like everything. I, I, th- I really think, Ali, that you have lived life 10x, as Jake <laughs> Paul would say. You, you, every story that you have is just a really extreme story of everyone else's childhood. Of um, Once I wanted to play Tenchu, and then my friend said, fuck off, so I beat his arm. <laughs> <laughs> Yours are always way better than that. I just so like- stay tuned for more. Yeah, stay tuned for more. I've got a few. Some of them are downers. We had to, like, not tell one, yeah, edit which one was of them definitely out. a downer. But I am going to tell it someday. And, yes, I'm going to get a lot of hate from people. But it's it's this guy. This guy is clearly a ridiculous man. Just, like, removed from reality. And the, the, the next story is going to be Adib Gets Dogs. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> not that one. <laughs> so Again, tuned. it is. It is just Yilmaz if he was born in the third world and could get away with this shit without the RSPCA going, um, you're going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> he should be in jail. <laughs> For a litany of reasons. <laughs> <laughs> so many reasons. <laughs> All right, anyway, right. we'll see you next week. See ya. <laughs> so we've got. Say, Finish it and we so can talk. Can we? Okay, we're gonna do. We're gonna do a vote real quick because I think we have time for only one more segment. Okay. Would you want to do? Uh, is Stephen Smith a cheat or just a desperate winner? Or Tales of Pakistan? Adib gets dogs. 
I mean, I always want to hear of the old tale. I just whenever you tell one of those tales, I think of Aladdin, and I'm really happy. So like, I, mean, I want to. This do, one's like pretty fucked up, but yeah, it's hell yeah, I, it's a pod. Yeah, just a warning to everybody out there. Uh, if you thought Dumbo was sad, yeah, just turn off now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, so Jordan, would you want to go for Tales of Pakistan or Steve Smith? I, you know what my vote is. <laughs> yeah, he's not a, this he, story. He, he's <laughs> yeah, a yeah, cricket enthusiast, but uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, on, on top of that. Uh, I know that cricket, you smack a ball with a bat. That's about it. And I would prefer to talk about that. That's pretty much it. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus. All right, so so Tales of Pakistan it is. So (laughs) Unanimously voted in. (laughs) Unanimously voted. So Adib uh, is a guy who, um, if you've just started listening to the pod... We introduce some. What do you mean? I don't know who he is. <laughs> anyway, what the can, hell? how do you not know? Can who you he please is? listen to the thing you're on? This is crazy. This just at least for feedback. A deep is just a ridiculous man. <laughs> okay, okay, he's extremely rich. He's basically he's, you- oh no one, but yes. with a billion dollars. I remember him. I remember him. Yilmaz. <laughs> Holy shit! Okay, that might go straight into the editing pile. <laughs> You're Continue. gonna have to you'll beat that um, out for your own bottom dollar's sake. I should hope. I'm not going to because it's your. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll do. I'll do. I'll do. It. Damn. Um, Bombshells here. Now today. I'm gonna have to turn off Miss Love's mic. Cause I was <laughs> That's my microphone. No, it's me. All right, go on. Uh, so Adib is basically just like a really rich Damn. Yomaz. Um, <laughs> so so uh, so Adib gets dogs now, <laughs> Adib gets but because he um because he wants dogs to show off and not to actually care for them he just gets these massive same reason as Miss Love German shepherds mm-hmm. yeah it's true <laughs> he gets these massive German I've shepherds I've got three dogs. Yeah. And, uh, wait, does he live in District Nine? He lives in District Nine. He's got a massive house. What's in it District actually called 9. again? Uh, it, well, it's it's called Defense Housing Authority. To give it's you an idea so of how rich this is, Defense Housing <laughs> Authority. I know I say this every time, but can we take a minute to recognize <laughs> how incredible <laughs> it is? A minute silence starting now. <laughs> okay. A moment of. You fucked it, Miss. Oh, sorry, I, I was going to wait the whole minute. I knew, I know you were going to, but it was so much more tape to kill. Uh, go uh, on, go so on. I, but to give you an idea of how rich this man is for new listeners, he owns a skyscraper. This is a man what? that couldn't pick tiles for six months. Every time Ali's brother rang him up and said, "Do you want to hang out?" He goes, "I can't. I'm on a really important job." I, what are you picking the the design of the tiles for your bathroom again yeah yeah. you don't understand how tough it is <laughs> all he had to do was say that one oh my God. and then his servants would have done and the rest what? and it took him six months and at one time That's he what? for this tile what? story are you serious he would just wake up at 4 p.m or 5 p.m and the shop would close at 6 p.m and so he'd was always it. miss it <laughs> <laughs> and, and this would be me if I had that one much time money. he goes to the shop and he sees the guy just closing up. So he's like, "Where I, I really need you to open the shop again for me." And he goes like, "Oh, I actually just closed." He's like, "No, no, no I've got this massive order for you. Just open your shop again." So this guy he looks at the car and he goes like, "Oh, this guy like seems actually pretty rich." So he goes like, "All right, fine, I'll open the shop." He opens the shop, looks around for two hours, oh doesn't my. pick anything, goes home, and still <laughs> has it. <a, two, laughs> what a fucking legend. <laughs> he, he, so he... Oh, what a, what a, what a legend. Yeah, he, it's just a... It's just a king. Tales from Pakistan. Ridiculous, man. <laughs> We have to go. So again, this man is easily the most incompetent boob in the world. He's just a fat Mr. Bean Nilmaz. <laughs> <laughs> and he owns a skyscraper in Dubai. Uh, that they bought at the absolute property boom. Uh, it crashed, and then they went, oh, no, we don't have any money anymore. Kept the uh, skyscraper. There's no tenants in it. It's just standing in the middle hey, of Dubai. What? And then goes, money's tight, you don't understand. And then all of his brothers, including him, went out and bought Lexus four-wheel drives the next day. <laughs> yeah, and he's showing it off, and he's like, look at this. I'm like, dude, I thought you were broke. He's like, no, sort no, like, like, I am, I am. But this is different. He's Trump. But this is that's insane. But to be fair, that's that empty skyscraper is pretty much Sydney <laughs> now. Yeah. It is. <sighs> so he, so he, so he decides. So this, this, this story should be reported to Peta. But so what he, <laughs> so he gets these oh, no. dogs. He gets two German shepherds. They're 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 massive. They don't mm. like him. They just keep barking at him. Oh, so God. he tells his. Why servants, do rich people always get German shepherds? Because okay. they're dumb cunts. Because release the hounds. That's right. Release oh, yeah, the hounds. Yeah, yeah, and also, like German shepherds require like ex- like really long walks, and none of them do it. Of course. They just look good. I That's guess. That's all of this guy. Anyway, so he gets dogs, right? And uh, and and then what? And so what he does is 
he he goes on vacations to like England or something with his entire family mm-hmm. for two months, forgets about the dogs. No, like totally, like it Jordan, skips his breath. mind. In fact, Jordan, just put your hands over your ears. I don't want you to hear this. Completely. It's too late. My innocence has been yeah. shattered. He, so he he goes to England. He's having fun. Still doesn't remember that he has two dogs at home. Comes back home. Story. No. And the dogs no. are just like bone structures. Oh. And they're still alive. They're going crazy. So he so he's he wants to take them to the vet and he actually like gives them some food, but they're going so insane that they just run out of the house. And he, at this point he just goes like, "All right, just he tells the servant just like let them go." So they go away. Fuck. 2 hours later, their servants are looking for the dogs. <laughs> now there is a graveyard that is Pretty close to the house, oh, no. so about like two or three blocks away from the house. He dug up his auntie, didn't he? Hey, so and the, when the dogs, they find the dogs, they come back and they've got human remains in their mouth. They've got bones and shit, and they come in. Then they feed them, and they're just insane. Take them to the vet, and the vet's like, "Dude, these dogs are fucked. Like, we've got to put them down. Like, they're they're this is they can't recover now. They've gone two months without food, and they're batshit crazy at the moment." And that's why Stephen King is better than Stephen oh Hawking. My <laughs> that's just God. the story. That's just Pet Cemetery. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go okay, rethink on some that basic note. thoughts, some basic morals. Uh, yeah. Landing on this a high. The same guy who used to push. People. Fuck! This is worse than Brothers Grimm. <laughs> I'm gonna go hug my dog for a year. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, but at least yeah, but as bed also miss obviously got. Oh fuck! I forgot to feed him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, that's so accurate. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next week, guys. Yeah. On that note. See ya. On that note, what a great Jesus pod. Christ. Bye. Uh, Adib's farmhouse is absolute trash. Yeah, so Adib... <laughs> I'm so excited! So yes. Adib is the... Strap yourselves he's a, he's a famous personality. A man who doesn't know he's famous. Very similar to Yilmaz. Exactly. He's, <laughs> he's a really rich Yilmaz. And as a result of being so rich that every... Uh, one of his whims has ever been tended to. He's basically that giant baby from Spirited Away. Yeah, and also, but he's forty now. No, no and also realize that um, he's a uh, well, he's married now, but he was <laughs> a virgin until he got married at like what, like age thirty. And he wasn't saving himself, was he? No, no, no. He's he just, just he was so too- socially retarded. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'll, wow. I'll tell. I'll tell. Like I'll, I'll just preface the um the the farmhouse story with another story. So I went mm. to Dubai recently. Yeah. And because he he's a bowler, he he drives around in like a Bentley over there. Now, so I'm so he picks me up and we're just driving. And um, so he tells me uh, a story that he he recently he like the day before this happened to him. So he's just he's driving his Bentley, which obviously attracts women in Dubai, because it's like the most materialistic place that you could ever imagine. It's like, a society of Kim Kardashians. Oh my god, Kim Kardashian! I don't know what Kim Kardashian is doing in the U.S. She should live in Dubai. Like I had to. Yeah, that's where Assault resides. I- <laughs> Hollywood is way too soulful for Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Yeah, Dubai is the place for her to be. I had to like escape that place literally after yes, a week. I couldn't I stay there. Mm. So, so I'm I'm driving around in a Bentley, and I'm like, man, Adib, this is mad, dude. You drive around in a <laughs> Bentley in Dubai. Like, are you getting any um, puss? Mm. So, uh, so this this was his response. So Adib goes like, yeah, you know what happened the other day? I was at this, um, I was at like a restaurant, and my car was just parked at the front, and this Spanish girl. She's like, is that your car? And I was like, yeah, it's my car. And then he's like, oh, that's really, really cool. So what do you do? And now, I just know that Adib's, uh, like, his first name or his title is Sheikh, which has nothing to do with, like, the, the kings of Middle East, the Sheikhs. He's just like, that's somehow, like, his name. Um, what, so it's just like how... Uh Black boxes give their name, call their kids king. Yeah, it's like it's 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 it's, it's just a really trashy name. Yeah. Imagine if like your uh, your mum named you uh, Mister Jordan Shanks, <laughs> as in like Mister <laughs> is part of you. So it's similar. He, like uh, so he's got shake yeah, yeah. in like his name. So I have an affair with Mister Minute. <laughs> so so he <laughs> so he tells the Spanish girl, um, "Oh, I'm actually royalty." <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> so it's a good pickup line. So 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 this bad goes like <laughs> bullshit. Like just because you've got a Bentley, I'm supposed to believe that you're the king of this country. <laughs> And he's like, nah. is that what he was saying? Yeah, he was, I'm the king of yeah, Dubai. Pretty much. Oh no, he wasn't saying that. He was saying I'm the prince of Dubai. <laughs> like the king is my uncle. So easily Googleable. So easily. And then he, and then the, and the, the chick was saying that's bullshit. Like that's not true. And he's like, nah. He shows yeah, her because she doesn't have an IQ of fifty. Yeah, no, but he shows her his ID and it says Shake a deep. <laughs> <laughs> and then the girl's like convinced and then and then i was like oh so what happened did you get on with her and he's like nah she said come to my house but i freaked out man i was just like, what because <laughs> because this was his first relationship and remember he is 24 at this point mm. or maybe 26 mm. No, 27. He's 27 years old when his first relationship happens. And, and he's this, still scared of the JJs. He was still scared of the JJs. But this was... Because Such you can tell... A, he is that baby from Spirited Away. Because <laughs> this was literally his relationship. He met, like, one of his um, his dad's friends. And she was younger than him. She was, like, 18, 19. Mm. And so I asked when him... When he was 27. When he was 27. So I asked him, it's like, oh, mad. He's like, yeah, I've got a girlfriend now. I was like... A deep, that's fucking insane. You've got a girlfriend? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I've got a girlfriend. I was like, so, so like, um, wh- what do you do? Like, do you guys go out on dates? He's like, no, nah, we don't go out on dates. I was like, wait, what? It's like, I was like, do you meet her? He's like, kind of. It's like, where does she live? He's like, oh, like four blocks from my house. I was like, so she's really close by. He's like, so I asked him, it's like, what is your courtship? Then? <laughs> and this is his courtship. I kid you not. Mm. Every month. He would drive to her house, throw a bundle of cash inside of her house in her in like her front uh, lawn garden, and would text her saying the package is there and drive away. And I was like, "What is this a drug deal? Or is this a court?" She was like, "No, nah, no, nah. I give her money so that she can buy stuff, man. That's how you keep women happy." Like that's Holy that hell. is not the and then she would just come out and take the cash and buy shit. <laughs> Fast forward seven months later, I was like, "So, are you still going out with her?" He was like, "No, nah, she was a gold digger. I broke up." <laughs> so, what? <laughs> You're the one who set those terms up. You just literally threw a bundle of cash. <sighs> And without getting it's anything, it's so right that his name is Shake. He is a king. <laughs> so, so he, yeah. he got nothing. He got nothing. But then again, money is nothing to him as well. It wasn't really. He he wasn't bummed at how much money he spent. Right? No, and I, and and he genuinely thought that's how you get on with women. You just throw a bundle of cash in their backyard and drive away. They'll keep them coming back. <laughs> and it kind of does, you know, but like in a very, very weird way. So, um, so his, 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 so, so it's a coming back to like his farmhouse story real quick. So he's, so one of his new businesses that he just bought up this massive farmhouse right. in like the outskirts of Karachi. Mm. And I, th- I guess like he put it Is it, it dangerous up, there? Um, no, not really. It's sort of close by. I mean, if you're, if you're living in Sydney, then it's kind of like the Blue Mountains. Ooh, uh, scenic. Scenic. Um, is it scenic or is it just goats and desert? It's goats and desert. Yuck. I guess, but like if you can enjoy s- goats, goats and, and desert. desert. <laughs> that's the place to go. Yeah, oh cool. my God. It's So it's basically like going on a holiday to Goulburn. Yeah. It's just like the only thing that you can say about it is like it's away from the hustle and bustle. <laughs> so, so, he, so he, real estate euphemisms so he bought up this farmhouse which yeah. if you if you remember from like a few episodes ago this was the same place that he kept his cows which are now dead because he abandoned them for years so so he's like he just put it Can up he stopped forgetting to feed animals <laughs> i'm not surprised this man if he thinks that courting is throwing like 20 grand at a chick every month <laughs> Giving her a salary <laughs> for what? For texting, for texting every now and then. He is the most insecure so man. Ma- Dude, go on a sex chat line. It is five dollars a minute. Did I tell At you? At least you get to masturbate. <laughs> Did I tell you why he broke up his engagement with this other girl? So this other girl was uh, the sister of a very famous uh, Pakistani cricketer. 
Um, I don't know if I should like. Who cares? Like his name's Bahab Riaz, but like he's like a famous fast bowler, and he made like he, like Australian cricket fans would know him. But anyways, like because this guy is famous, he's got like a huge Twitter following or some shit, and because his sister is his sister, she has like a massive Facebook. Or like Twitter following as well, and Adib right, right, has right, like right. maybe forty friends on Facebook. On Facebook, right? Um, so basically, his account is like something to people try and swindle money off. It's like yeah. that many friends. Yeah. So so whenever <laughs> so whenever he would put up a status or something, he would have to call all of his forty friends to like it. <laughs> and his 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 fiance. Um, was just like she was just like killing it in social media, right? So he got really insecure, and because he's a dick, he told her to like deactivate her profile because, and he gave this as an excuse. He's like, because because we are Muslim, and you're putting up pictures of yourself that is not right. Take it off. <laughs> <laughs> and and the chick was like, no, <laughs> what? <laughs> Fuck off. And she's like, I'm, I, I'm not gonna do that. He's like, okay, I'm calling off the engagement, and he calls off the engagement. This it's dumbass so good of a that, man. Um, religion is always evoked for people that are like petty and insecure in relationships. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so he, but anyway, he's, he's trash farmhouse. Yeah, he's trash farmhouse. So he gets, he gets a farmhouse, and I guess he puts it up on Airbnb or like, I guess Pakistan version, Pakistan's version of Airbnb. I don't know like how shit works over there anymore. So. So, like, all of his reviews were just horrible, one star, cause, and all of them said, the pool was dirty, like, really, really <laughs> dirty, like, it was black, we almost <laughs> thought it had, like, it was filled with Coca-Cola. <laughs> and knowing it deep, it probably was. <laughs> Yeah, because he is the man that just has a water cooler filled with Coke in yeah, his room. because I don't think, I've never seen him drink water. Because he has three things. He it's has like pizza. It's like that old movie with Tom Hanks where he switches bodies with a 40-year-old. That is his house. <laughs> yeah, he has pizza, chicken tikka, um, and and black lentils, surprisingly. So these are the only three things that he'll eat. Can't fault him. <laughs> but mostly pizza. And he doesn't have water. I think when he was like 12, he was like, water is overrated. And then he had like a massive cooler in his room filled with like huge bottles of Coca-Cola. So he just like he has he gets his water intake from Coke. I don't know if I'm jealous of this man or not. No, but he, I mean being socially retarded <laughs> and often not have sex until you're 30 years old, that's a setback. But at the same time, like all you can eat chicken ticker. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know, okay, this is the last time. So when I, I met him after ages, now he's 30 years old. So I asked him, dude, are you still having Coke? And he was like, you know what? That was actually not a right move. Cause I, <laughs> cause I started gaining weight heaps from it. Cause I would have like maybe eight, equivalent to like ten bottles a day. So ten like, bottles. Well, cause he's having his water from Coke. Like he's thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this was this was his response. I kid you not. He's like, so I was like, oh, so what? You're not you're not having Coke anymore. You're just having like you're sticking to water. He's like, no, no, no I just get diet Coke now. <laughs> Oh my god! This ridiculous man. So like an eighties fat joke in a movie, where like the 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 chick goes like, and a diet coke. I'm on a diet. <laughs> I'm on a diet. He, he he doesn't see that as a joke. He he saw that movie and was like, good tip. <laughs> yeah. So his 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 farmhouse is is like all of his reviews were one star. Mm. The pool is dirty. Mm. The air conditioners weren't working. Mm. Um, and, uh, the, <laughs> what? yeah, and the place was dirty and he, like, there's one guy that works there, like with his own servant, <laughs> he works there and they said, um, can you like, um, clean up the room? <laughs> and the servant was like, oh yeah, yeah, sure. I'll just get my stuff. And he, he basically just bounced. <laughs> what? Cause he, cause he's not too happy working at this farmhouse cause he wants to be in the hustle bustle. <laughs> so he, his, so he quit. No, he didn't quit. He just went out. He's just like, yeah, fuck him. Left. He just left. He's like, he went out and then he came back like the next day and he was like, oh yeah, didn't like the other guy clean it. And he's like, what other guy? <laughs> 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 so so he had just one star reviews. So he calls me and he's just like, man, can you do me a favor? I was like, all right, what a deep. What's the favor? He's like, can you like leave a good review? On my, so <laughs> on my, on my review, and I go. And on, on top of that, how obvious is that? Twenty-one stars, and then one person going like, "I liked it." 
<laughs> no, 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 no. This is a funny bit. So I go on it, and like most, all of them are like one star. One of the guy, and there's a response by him. He's such an idiot. This will tell you how big of an idiot he is. One of the things was all the air conditioners weren't working. It was hot as hell. Please, please go to this place before booking it. Highly recommend checking it out before you book it. And his response was, but one of the uh, air conditioners was working. And he was like, yeah, but it was like, it was, it was hot air. <laughs> And he's like, <laughs> you, there's no requirement. It's for, Pakistan. It's fucking Pakistan. And it's like hot as hell. So, <laughs> and, and then, That's amazing. So, he's so he had a heater in he there. He had a heater in there. And he's replying with his own name to these reviews. Smart. The next review is five star with his own name <laughs> that he's using to review people saying, best place ever, best memories, highly recommend. <laughs> So, so I go, I go, uh, so I go on. Here. Why does money make you mentally handicapped? I don't know. I think he was handicapped before he had money. He's just always oh, been right. Okay, okay, okay. So then I, so now I'm in this conundrum. I don't want to like lie, but I also do want to give a good review. And I've been to his place. Yes, it's a trash. It's a, it's a shithole. No doubt. You've been there. Yeah, I've been there. It's a shithole. So you would honestly give it one star. Yeah, if I was paying for it, I never paid for that shit. I was just happy that he was, he was just like, one time we went there and he had weed for the first time and he threw up. Uh, and then once he threw up and while he was like, oh shit, I threw up, I've got to go. And it was just like a, it was like a cartoon scene. He walks, he walks on top of his own vomit and slips and falls down on his own fucking vomit. Like, so <laughs> I'd give it five stars for that. Like, you know, <gasps> best memories ever. So I go there and I was just like. I bet you he's animated. <laughs> I bet you this man is not three dimensional. <laughs> he's not, I feel like he's just going to disappear soon. So, so, so I gave it a review saying, um, if you're looking for a hotel like experience this is not the place for you but if you're looking to live um a proper like a something like if you want to live proper nature life without the luxuries of the city life this is the place for you <laughs> five stars for the experience i felt at one with nature <laughs> <sighs> So, more or less, you were saying that it was a cave. Yeah, I just basically just said, like, dude, don't expect anything from this. <laughs> but, like, if, you, if you're if you into, like, staying hot because you want to be like, I don't want air conditioners anymore, I just want to get out of the city, then, yeah, go to this place. I like also how he has an extremely disloyal servant. He, he basically has the real-life Dobby the Elf from Harry Potter. Yeah, and he imprisons that, 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 him. That, yes! He imprisons, I think. And I'm he really doesn't want to be imprisoned, but he's magically bound to it. Yeah, he's magically... No, he's just like he literally imprisons... He once imprisoned his servant by mistake. That's... Oh, I, I, tell I think this I one. told you this story. I can't remember what it was for, but something that his servant did that he got pissed off about. So he told his other servants to, um, to lock him up in a room. Um, and I think... Well, and I was just like, dude, that is... That's so illegal. You have no idea. And it's like, this is literally, like, this is the sort of shit, like, this is from 12 Years of Slave. Like, this is 2015. And um, so so then he's just like, oh, yeah, but, like, you know, something really bad happened after that. I was like, what? It's like, so I, I told them to put him in the room and lock him up. And then I went out. And I forgot about like like everything. So so his, his and servant, people were shocked that he didn't feed his dog. Yeah, people were shocked. Dude, he can't feed humans. So <laughs> so so then he came back two two days later, and like his other servants were like, "Sir, that guy's still in the room. Do you want him to like take him out now?" And he got really freaked. Was like, yeah, 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 get him out, get him out. It's like, and then he comes out. He's like, "Okay, man, do you want to do you want to order some pizza?" <laughs> <laughs> he buys him Pizza Hut, and that was his version of an apology. Well, so he didn't even say sorry. He just bought him Pizza Hut. Yeah, you know, he can't say sorry. He's just like, he's just bought him Pizza Hut, and he's like, and, and you know what the worst part Man, about you, it was? You know what, you, okay, like, I've just got to get this on the record. I am so glad that this man exists. <laughs> I am so glad that this man is not in any position of authority. Me neither. Yeah. I'm so happy about that. Don't you think? But like, having said that, the world would be a much worse place if a deep didn't exist. Dude, you know what I imagine him to be? You know, like um, in the sixties, Indonesians cult a million communists. Mm. Soharto did, with by the way backing of the Western forces. 
No one talks about that. Yeah, it was you a think genocide. About your role in that people that were born in 1989, <laughs> <laughs> including Australia. Um, but yeah, so they killed like a, and so basically the way they killed a million communists was that they, the government just hired like local gangs, and they're mm. like, all right, work for us and be our gang. Mm. and go and kill these communists. <laughs> right. I imagine Adib to be the head re- head leader of being assigned to kill all the communists. Right. But he'd be... Because he is, isn't he? He's just Pakistani Homer Simpson, and he's in that episode where they started their own visual anti-group. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not the best man ever. Um, I don't know. It depends on your outlook on life. It's like what uh, Dome King was saying about life. Dude, he should. Is be it a- filled with bad people or good people? And, and I mean, even the Dome King would have to say that Adib is definitely one of the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> Adib, a man with a moral compass. Uh, um, yeah, he let the guy out dude, and bought him pizza. I think he should be a cartoon. It's basically what Bill Burr said about his new show. Uh, what's it called again? F is for family. He was saying like how his dad was kind of crazy and would do really fucked up shit. So he didn't want to do it as um as like a normal television series because he thought people would be turned off by like the parenting techniques. So he's like, he made an animation out of it. He's like, no one gives a fuck about cartoons. True. <laughs> so he now has like the dad literally holding... Because, you know, like Homer That's Simpson yeah, strangling... is a cartoon. He is. He should be a cartoon or like a character for a cartoon. So if remember, you're drinking nothing but Coke, there is no way that you have a normal digestive system. You you have to just be a drawing. Do you think he'll die at 45 because he's had yes. no water? I really want to look at that man's teeth. <laughs> well, I don't think you do, mate. <laughs> is it well, it's just like a Port Jackson shark? Is it just gums? Yeah, yeah he's always... But you know, I'll give him that much. His 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 rule of not eating anything or having anything else includes coffee, cigarettes... He doesn't have any of that, so it's not like... One vice. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Ten-year-old's whiskey. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we're going to... start the embassy in Jerusalem. What's yeah. the deal? All right, so you know how I was saying, like, a Adib's a dickhead? Can we not kill people like a Adib in Gaza? <laughs> <laughs> so, Jew... So, 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 That's what we're saying. The world would be a poor place without them. And right now, hundreds of Adibs are dying a day. <laughs> Can we? This is not helping. There, no one's like, yeah, can let let them let them let them let, <laughs> let them bump. Let's bump them out. <laughs> um, I want to take a poll on it. I reckon, we, we, honestly, put it in the Facebook's comment section if you think that Adib is a, a king. Put up a picture of that Turkish guy that's always in Melbourne, and they just put underneath it Aussie. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You know what he did? Hey, did we just drop time. one really? Patreon member? They're pissed oh, off. Um, what were we talking about again? <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Tales of Pakistan. Oh, oh yeah. Tales of Pakistan. Dude, I... Okay, I, I remember this story. How could I forget? I remember the story while talking to someone over the phone. Um, but so, when I was about 15 years old, there was a, a gang um, called uh, Factory. Right. <laughs> In 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 our area, one. and they were like thugs or Factory. whatever, right? So we said that we've got to we've got to start our own gang, and we called it Industry. Oh my god! Very very Damn. creative, and also the name of a brand at Kmart. <laughs> industry, yeah. no, dude. Industry isn't industry like a big ass denim brand, like uh, like yeah. the jeans yeah, cost in like Kmart, dude. In Kmart. Yeah, they sold out. Hey, but that wasn't the inspiration. So, so I so As I decide to like I decide to like start a gang because like, dude, gangs are mad. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So I was, so at the at first we had about um four members, <laughs> and then yeah, that's we went a gang. out. Yeah, well, that's a gang. But no, you know, pretty soon because because then we went out. And we were like, all right, so we'll try to recruit during um recess. <laughs> so, <laughs> man, every story just makes you want to fucking migrate to Pakistan. So, every story you tell. So I, I go out, I go out, and uh, and we start like recruiting people. <laughs> and by the end of like the first twenty minutes, we had about thirty five gang members. What? How? Because they're all scared of the factory. No, no, no. Because like uh, we were kind of like the popular kids, so everyone was just like, "Yeah, that sounds mad, dude. That sounds mad." God. And I was what, the guy. What were your activities? Well, here's the thing. So we just so this is this 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 gang story is actually not the punchline of the story because I want to tell you something that's one of the most profound things that ever happened to me. Anyway, but I'll get that. I'll get to it Man. later. So, um, so we started. This, uh, wait, what was your question again, Jordan? Oh, I was just wondering why. 
Okay, I understand that it was because you wanted to defend yourself against them. So it was basically the visual antis from The Simpsons. You didn't really have anything. It was just like meaning what exactly? You know, push people around. Make oh, yeah. Feel yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what, that was it. it was a, that was activity. Make ourselves feel big. <laughs> yeah. No. Our, our first activity, I think, was. Um, yeah, I think our first activity was to, to like actually get one of the, um, one of the guys that was like in the year above us, um, started like isolate him and then we'd just lock him up in a room. Man. Some, some shit like that. Why? Um, why'd you want to imprison him? Just cause like the power thrill of it. Man, our, our, but wait, wait, hold on. So, so the yeah. main point of this whole gang was the way his gangs Factory. work in like, um, defense housing authority. <laughs> <laughs> your, was, can your life stop being terminated too? <laughs> Fuck! Was, you were you you John you tag Connor. you huh? tag you like you do tagging you tag yeah so I tag so in defense house well, but authority. first we needed to yeah we had defense so first we needed to come up with our own names like our own uh, what were they called yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 so um well I had two first one was um for me um it was um Biggie <laughs> just Biggie. Biggie was my thing, and I had to, I had to get rid of it because I was like, "Do you know who Biggie Smalls was?" Yeah, fuck you, dude. Yeah, why, so, why would I? Uh, so you were just tagging Biggie's name. Yeah, well, that's why I changed it within yeah. like two days. <laughs> so I was like, "This is hey, this is not original at all." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Slim then I changed shady. it to, to <laughs> and then I just changed it to Boss, Boss, oh, yeah. yeah, just Boss. That's, a, that's an improvement. I do like that. <laughs> so anyway, so we would start tagging, and uh, and and one of the so. One of my friends, he, he he. So right now he's he's just a con man. Like that's what he does for a living. One wow. time, he, yeah. Now he was a rich kid. Well, not, he just likes the art of it. Fair enough. No, who are you talking about? I'm talking about like this other guy that you don't know of. Was this no, the no, guy? But I that if, if he's going to your school, yeah, yeah, yeah like he's he, he wasn't he's not the son of a driver. No, but he he was he wasn't he wasn't <clears> rich. <throat> Yeah, okay. Um, but but he was he wasn't the son of a driver. Like son of the drivers come to pick up kids, not. So <laughs> they're not even at school. <laughs> no, they they are at school, but they've got their own school. Yeah, driving school, yeah. right? <laughs> like they're just learning from pop. Oh, they go to school in the same way that a cub is going to school by following their father bear around and learning how to fish. Yeah, oh, yeah. man, well, that's rough. That's not true. <laughs> they did go to school. Like I just don't know what schools they went to. <laughs> so <laughs> I've seen Google images of it. It's yeah. not really a school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the so, outer defense authority schooling. Yeah. It's basically it's just school. you know you know when you go to a pet store and there's like way too many mice in a tank. Oh. That's that's a poor Pakistani school. Dead. Damn, Look, man, poor Real Pakistani tall. schools have like no walls. Um, no, like no teacher, like often no teacher. What? Like, what? Dude, dude, just gets the, up. The against. biggest I tell you problem how it is, dude. Like, I'm not even kidding about this. Like, we should. This could be like the substance of section two. Like, the biggest problem with Pakistani education system is no teachers. <laughs> they just, they just don't show up. So it is literally like well, again how do they in not the Simpsons. Show up? Well, I'll tell you why. Because like in the 70s, they changed the schooling system. They basically made teachers bureaucrats. Mm. As in all of the public schools came under the government and everyone, uh, all the teachers became public servants. So they had like permanent jobs, all of them. So they didn't go to work. And then, so they decided, because the principal had no power over them. Yeah. Um, it, the government basically employed them. So the principal would say, why aren't you coming to work? They'd say, fuck off, you cunt. And just what? like, just walk away. And the principal would be like, I can't do anything about it. So the biggest problem with like the school system over there is no teachers. Like actually, damn. So the class. So what do they do all day? They just sit around just and like watch the, Indian soap operas. No, they're just like they're just like cows over there now. Like kids don't even. Sh Man, it's some, it's some, the system's pretty bad. But anyways, <laughs> I just hope at least there's <laughs> one. Good to be. I hope there's at least one teacher that's just takes has taken into his own hand. He's like, here's the four one one. Some gangsters dishing your fly <laughs> girl, but like his own version of that. I was <laughs> it, with the whole system like. It's it okay. Would be exactly it would work if it was just that one. It, it would be enough. Like it'd be enough for that one guy. <laughs> one guy, <laughs> terminate. Yeah, that was Ali's teacher. That's why I joined a gang. Yeah, yeah. exactly. No, I. Uh, uh, yeah. No, I was. So, you one of these. No, like our school because <laughs> I went to private a school. But okay, so so we we start we start tagging right as. This isn't anyway. unlike. This isn't unlike. Uh, 
the Australian scenario. In no, but this is this is the this is the, the so weird the scenario that but I'm yeah. talking. So I used to go to these math tuitions, and just outside of this um, tuition center. Um, were two heroin addicts and they Damn. were looked at by um I can't stress this enough they were looked by looked at by the entire neighborhood as just rats that should be killed because they were they were batshit crazy they would throw bricks at kids like, Jesus. like they were just insane right do you remember how did they think that would equate in money I don't know. I, once I saw them do heroin this way, and this was the first time I saw someone do heroin. Shit. And I'm not kidding about it. Like, I've well, ever seen someone do heroin. You are way more in- hardcore than us. Dude, okay, no. Yeah. We, 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 our, our, school was, you- our school, we, 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 like, did this thing called stacks on each other, which was just jumping on people. And, like, we made some <laughs> kid- One of the kid left. He left, because he was just like, oh, they're, they're singling me out. They're abusing me. Just me. It's like. But literally, it's, it's, it's like the only thing that gets us through geography. Everyone does it. <laughs> and that was like hardcore. Yeah. You were just like casually seeing people OD. No, well, this was in my school. <laughs> yeah. well, this is, this is, I'm not, I, whenever I, I told this to someone recently and they were like, this is not how you do heroin. You're bullshitting. I'm like, I swear to fucking God. And I cannot forget this. Oh my and the God. reason is what happens after. But so I saw these guys do heroin this way. So they've got what, like a syringe, right? Mm. They take out some blood from their Wayne. Yeah. Mm. Wait, so first they put some heroin in their fucking syringe, I have right? heard this already. I've they heard take this, out yeah. blood. I've seen this before. And then, so the, now the syringe has blood, blood and, heroin. and heroin. Then they shake that shit and then they inject it back into their Wayne. It can, Why? It can't be done well, like that. I mean, to like get hot. What do you mean? But why, why don't they just inject, why the they just inject it? What's I the- don't know, dude. I don't know. I wasn't friends with these guys. So, <laughs> and so, so these guys were like <laughs> fucking crazy, right? It is kind of weird. And we decided to start selling them heroin. No, no, <laughs> no. But like, this is this. Um, you I, know what I thought you were going to say just quickly? What? Fuck. Just think of this as a terrifying thought. They did that. So they take out the blood and then they mix the hair and then they've got it in here. I mean, I suppose it's the same as... No, no, it's more creepy than just the heroin, because then, like, AIDS. And then they just chase a kid around going, Come here! No, well, oh, they did shit, shit like that. Oh, oh my god! god! Go on, go on, go on. So now, so, so, no, but this is this is what I'm trying to explain to you. Yeah, so now, yeah. so now, so this is, so we go to this tuition often. We see these guys and we, and we know, like, to stay the fuck away from them. But this time, they weren't there. So we're like, all right, you know what? Let's just tag here. Because th- we just started the it's gang. It's their spot, yeah. It's their spot. So we're, we're tagging yeah. just over there. Yeah. While I'm tagging, oh, I remember God. it like it was yesterday. While I'm tagging, one of those guys comes up to me. And now I'm shitting my pants. I don't yeah. know what the hell this guy's going to do. You know what he says to me? He's like, what? why are you ruining this wall? You know, this wall belongs to all of you. This is your wall. Don't paint things over it. I was like, what? Weren't you the guy that was hitting a kid with a brick yesterday? <laughs> I probably heroin. got the brick from the wall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this is what he said to so me. He's being some Zen karate master Dude, in this, this fucking. Is, um, okay, so the, 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 another thing that I want to stress is no one looks at property as collective. Like a collective ownership in all of Pakistan. That it's is the biggest private. problem. So it's no, all- no, no. It's oh, all private. Sorry. No one gives a fuck because there's no sense of... Com- like there's no... Okay. So if your road is like really clean, mm. you'd want to keep it clean. But if it's dirty as shit, you keep putting shit out there. <laughs> and if someone tells you, dude, this road belongs to us, you'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? That yeah. house belongs to me. This belongs to the government yeah, that's trying to like yeah. dildo me in the ass every day. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Like, there's no sense of community ownership. Well, I understand, Except yeah. for this motherfucking guy who for some reason is Western as fuck in his way of <laughs> looking at things. Well, heroin, you know, it's good on him. He's probably seen, uh, hard candy <laughs> <laughs> okay and I, what happened well no well I basically just ran away but then our gang went pretty crazy and then we went like and then we sort of like you started killed him didn't you no, I'm just checking I'm just checking <laughs> yes it was, it was it needed to be done dude that guy lived in the gutter too like he that was his house damn he so, lived so in the fucking he, gutter. So did he sort of set you on a path of redemption where you're just like shut the hell up no dude like I actually I, I didn't tag after that actually Wow, because it's it's something like a, a person like that coming up to you and yeah. telling you that it's probably dude, don't very r- intense. Yeah, it was like it had an impact on me, but but then plus the gang went like rogue. They started like tagging each other's houses, and I was like, I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? This is this is not good for. <laughs> I'm trying to build this institution. Holy shit, you were leaning. 
Yeah, yeah, and these guys were blew fu- up out of your hands. It, it went crazy. I, I was the guy with like the pen in, uh, behind the ear and the register. Is like, wait, hold up, hold up. We we Left can factory. we can somehow accommodate all of these guys. If we've got if we've got more numbers, we're bigger in strength. Yeah. And then they're like, yeah, but like that guy, that guy that you took in the gang, he's a cunt, dude. Okay, so do you want so one of the things that one of my friends did. Oh, oh man, it's kind of dude. This is like this. This is you would love this. He, this love, he's not gonna hear this it because this is straight up right. racism. <laughs> Like, no, fickle. wait, no, because you'd realize that yeah, Muji's are racist cool. too. So, so this this is what. He, so one of our <laughs> teachers, because all of our teachers for some reason were like were Christians. Uh, one of my teachers uh, was named. Uh, his well, name that's was a recipe for disaster. Christians like and. Christian and Muslim school. That's going to no, work It wasn't a Muslim really well. school. Okay. But, like, the, the kids were Muslim. Anyway, so... Not a good... Yeah, so, okay. so, like, my teacher's name was uh, Victor Sebastian. This is the <laughs> dumbest thing ever, but it's also very embarrassing. So, my friend, he what? goes that's to That's not a Pakistani name. Well, he's that's why he's Christian. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. So, he... So, he's... So, my, my friend, he, like, he comes late at night at, like, 3 a.m., mm-hmm. goes to the primary school section off the thing and just like just the dumbest he just writes Victor Penis Christian Penis just like massive across the wall Man of applause please uh, it's almost as good as Chris Cr- Brown goes poopy <laughs> yeah, it's, it's but I, and to this day and it was hilarious to us because it was just the dumbest shit ever. Yeah. it was just so blatantly racist that you're like yeah that's it's, it's a joke I don't know why it's, it's racist. That's not racist. Well, so it's, it's mean. It's sacrilege, right? Well, as in, like, dude, the thing Whatever. is, like, in a, in, a, in a country where 98% of the people are Muslims and, like, the Christians are, like, giving you education right. and you just write, yeah. Victor <laughs> Penis <laughs> Christian Penis. I see where you're getting it from. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Dude, yeah. like, okay, it is, it, <laughs> like, I am, I am, I'm ashamed <laughs> to say this story. Like, it's... It, I am? Uh, yes, I'm pretty I, proud of you, friend. Me, <laughs> I, mean, I am, dude. That friend of mine just is fucking insane. Get the insane. fuck out of Pakistan. Well, he lives in Canada France. now, and yeah, he does exactly. credit card frauds. Yeah, the France of America. Wait, that guy. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a con man. Like, in fact, someone actually recently called me up, and they asked me because um, <clears throat> that friend of mine uh, proposed a business deal. Of like uh, scrap tires from Pakistan, <laughs> send Fuck. them to Canada, and he'll sell them so or something. <laughs> that yeah. is like one hundred and one, like the Schwindler's book of swindling. What you want to do is get old tires because they—that's what you want. You get them for free, and you make ten bucks a pop. Like. Yeah, Who the I, fuck's man, buying that? He must not own anything except tiny hats. He, he mm. doesn't know that you can put a beanie on. Can we head. track him down? Yeah, dude. Like you can easily track him down. I don't want to oh. track him down because mm, I, I feel like, like I'm gonna go to jail or something. Dude, dude he t- sent me like ten credit card numbers like a few months ago, saying like yeah, buy yourself whatever. Yeah, Why awesome. didn't you? I told him never to fucking contact. Dude, I don't, man, it's <laughs> dude. We, okay, this is who knows who's going to go. And I don't trust this guy at all. He is such a big con man. He's, dude. He cons everyone. By One time, yeah. I took him to my friend's house, and um, uh, actually, I don't want to take him to my friend's house. My it's, anyway, so he's he's there. He ends up being there, and I have to leave. Um, and the next thing I know, he he stole his fucking Xbox controller. <laughs> Like, who does that? <laughs> and oh, when MIA, fuck. I had to track him down. <laughs> MIA! Ali, here's what I want you to do. Uh, I want you to get this man, and then I want you to resign him. from this podcast yeah. <laughs> and ask for him to take your place. No, this is what we're doing. <laughs> so I managed to remember another uh, a deep story, which is, um, be ready for this. The time we found out that a deep can't read. <laughs> this is a true story. So as as you know, that a deep is an ex- extremely rich man and an extremely dumb man. So throughout, he's billionaire Yilmaz. <laughs> but on top of that, grew up in a third world country. <laughs> did well? Did Yilmaz like uh, gr- grow up in Australia? Like. Was yeah. he an immigrant, or was he born here? No, his here? parents are immigrants. Yeah, okay. So and he, he was, was just here. a benefactor of of really rich Turkish people that owned four kebab shops. <laughs> yeah, well, and used to always say, "Man, Turkey's so much better than Australia. This place is a shithole." <laughs> what? 
Every single shot I've ever seen of Turkey is an old man holding a donkey. <laughs> so where? So this is, I think, year eight or year nine. Um, and and so Adib Adib was basically not very gifted academically. Let's just put it this way. He uh, he 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 always like he never showed his marks, but we knew that he always scored the button. Really? Yeah. How do you know that? Because, like, teachers would often make it obvious. But the only thing <laughs> was, every year, when, the, when we would go into the next class, somehow Adib would also be there. He never failed a year. So we're like, I don't know, whatever's happening. And he used to say that, oh, I managed to pass at the end. Anyways, this time, this is the day Adib gets exposed. So where, So one of these tough teachers decides... That you know how like when you're reading like a, I don't know if you guys had this we had like comprehension where you would read like yeah, a passage yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and you had to, levels like, one to ten then lift off orbit and touchdown yeah so so when we so we were doing like some comprehension exercise and the teacher would often make like you know uh, some of the students read it okay now love where this is going <laughs> so so and and no teacher ever asked a deep. For one reason, they knew that nothing intelligent is going to come out of this mouth. Secondly, ah. they were kind of afraid of Adib because his parents were too rich and too powerful. Yep. But this teacher did not care. So she, she asked she asked Adib, Okay, Adib, can you start reading from page 89? Adib responds, I, even though this was an English class, responds in Urdu saying, <laughs> I, 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 I don't do that. <laughs> And and you know what? And we weren't surprised because Adib actually never did that. Like he <laughs> genuinely doesn't do that. So uh, it's okay. so good that that didn't arouse suspicion. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were just thinking that uh, yeah, Adib, as if Adib's going to participate in anything <laughs> academic. So so, but but this teacher's like adamant. She's saying like, no, Adib, you're you, you need to read this. Mm. Start from page eighty nine, and Adib is like protesting. <laughs> he is saying. <laughs> I do not do this. You must be new. <laughs> uh, I, I, it's I, just such a cartoon. I didn't know that that happened in anything but cartoons. <laughs> like where, 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 where the the power imbalance where a student can say to a teacher, "Know your place." Oh yes, and 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 you know what? The power imbalance was real. Adib was way more powerful than that teacher. The teacher actually went to school, had to work hard, and probably lives in like a lower middle class, shitty town yeah. that Adib regularly yeah. goes into, like slap people. Like that was the power imbalance. Homer, yeah, he's Homer Simpson. The teacher is Frank Grimes. <laughs> yes. And and so, but like the teacher's like sticking to her guns, and it's like, no, Adib, you have to read this. Yeah. And then Adib eventually gives in, and then he starts to read it, and he's and I think he had to read like, let's say if the sentence was, and then he went to the local shop to get a candy. Adib says, oh. he's quiet, and then he's like, um, Miss. I forgot my glasses. <laughs> and then, Did he wear glasses? No, he never wore glasses. The only thing that he had was a comb in his front pocket every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because he had long hair. And every time he got like a little nervous or he was bored, he would take it out and he would start combing his <laughs> hair. As a, a, a kid in year eight, he was that particular about the way he looked. So, anyways, eventually... He just can't read. And that's when we figure out that Adib is illiterate. <laughs> Adib cannot read. And that was a revelation because, you know, we all knew that Adib wasn't the smartest cookie. Actually, he's a, he's a smart man, but like... Is he? Well, you know... You've like, never said anything that even hints towards that. Actually, you know what? Okay, smart man is... is He's a very confident man. <laughs> That's, yes. I guess, <laughs> nowhere near the same thing. Yeah, okay, he's not smart. Um, and yeah, and the, and he literally, he literally could not read. And then he admitted later on that the only thing he can write is his name. He's a hillbilly. He's a hillbilly. He's a hillbilly that struck oil. You know what? In hindsight, I think, I think he might have been just autistic, and no one diagnosed him. 
Well, autistic people can read. No, no, no. Sorry, not autistic. Dyslexic. I mean, I think dyslexia is just when you read a sentence and a few words are mixed around. So you still are able to read the sentence. No, he wasn't able to read the sentence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and on top of that, usually people that have dyslexia are creative or have some talent. Isn't the closest thing that Adib has ever had to a talent is the fact that I'm pretty sure ever since he's been eight years old, all he's drunk is Diet Coke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he, he eats three things. Uh, so he, so he, he consumes three things. Consumes so much better, like he's a plant. <laughs> so in terms, so he, he actually, I don't know what he, he's up to now. But when we were growing up, Adib didn't have water. He had Coke, <laughs> not Diet Coke. Coke. Oh, sorry, right, my mistake. Yeah, it, he, he only had Coke. And so glad of- that I'm not in Pakistan because me mistaking that and going like, Diet Coke, I drink Coke. Yeah. I'd be whipped. In public. (laughs) And he had one of those, like, coolers in his room that would have those massive Coke bottles that I thought was only available in mineral water. (laughs) That was, And he would just go with his glass and he would put it under it and it would just, like... It was basically like he had, like, a fountain, like a Hungry Jack's fountain Coke thing in his room. (laughs) And he would only consume that. And when you tell him that a human body needs water, he would tell you that Coke also contains water. (laughs) He is a genius. He is a genius, and it, which is true. The uh, the other thing that he would eat is uh, pizza, but f- only from Pizza Hut. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last thing Holy that hell. he would... He's, he's the guys from Wayne's World. <laughs> <laughs> and the last thing that he would consume is tandoori chicken. <laughs> <laughs> he's got life right. Those are the three best food groups. And I'm not kidding. These and how good is it that the, the bottom of his food pyramid, you know how at the bottom of it's always vegetables and fruit? Yeah. His bottom is just Coke. <laughs> 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 if it was an animation, it would just show Coke pouring into the top of the pyramid and yeah. drowning out the vegetables. Those smiley faces of the tomato going... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Now, wait, wait, hold up. The Adib illiterate story doesn't end here. because oh, yeah, sorry. It, okay. yeah. So, what happens now is that the, he gets exposed, right? That he's like, he's, he's illiterate. So, <laughs> so, the teacher is now thinking, what the hell is this guy doing here? Like, how is this guy illiterate? And he's already in year nine. Like, who let him pass? He must have given some sort of exam, some sort of test, you know, to get all the way here. Anyways, what she does is, she's a bit of a hard ass. What she does is, okay, Adib, the next, so we used to have, like, every monthly we'd have, like, class tests. So she'd be like, okay, I'm going to evaluate your class test very particularly now. And if I think that you are not up to the mark, we will have to take some action. Anyways, so what happens is, next class test. I, I don't know, like, everyone's, like, curious to see what the hell is going on, right? So we, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing the test. I look back, and Adib is basically just chilling during the whole test. He's just, like, he, he isn't even writing anything. Everyone else is, like, going insane. They're writing shit, and he's just, like, he's just chilling. So now I'm thinking that maybe he's just gonna be like, yo, I don't do tests. <laughs> but that's not what happened. At the end, they collected the exam, well, the tests, and, including Adib's, and Adib hands in his booklet. And he gets, like, insanely good marks. It's, like, it's amazing how... And the teacher's fucking confused. Like, what the hell is going on here? Like, I literally saw him not write anything. So she obviously su- suspects that he didn't do this shit. <laughs> and what Adib had done, actually. <laughs> anyway, so what she says is... You know, she takes Adib's test to the principal. Because she's, Adib's already on the radar now. She takes the principal and says... This is not done by this boy. <laughs> this is he did not write anything in class. I don't know how he knew the questions, but this this he he didn't do this. He someone else did it for him. In fact, she was very right because a deep <laughs> tuition teacher was a teacher from another class who basically was getting paid a lot by Adib's family to teach him. Mm. And so what he did was he stole the exam papers, wrote the entire test for him, and handed it to him before the exam even be- or the test even began. And Adib had it all along. Does so- Pakistan exist or is it just like like a, a, a movie that in, 
stars Vince Vaughn going back to school. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a movie that stars Vince Vaughn and uh, Paul Rudd. Uh, <laughs> Two hundred million extras. <laughs> so anyway, so the principal asks Adib to come in and says that did you write this test, Adib? And he says yes, every word. Of it. <laughs> Boss. So so then <laughs> take that, uh, so, Dean. So then so then she says, okay, bring me all of your other books. And what she's doing is is comparing the writing at this point. Mm. But Adib, give, I'll give him credit for this. What he did was he rewrote the entire test in his own writing. Well, so he can he could do like calligraphy. He could copy shit, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so he wrote the entire test. This system is you're right. It is a lot smarter than just learning how to read. <laughs> <laughs> I love it how dumbasses go to a huge eff- Herculean effort to remain dumb. Yeah. So, 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 so then what happens is the principal's like, okay, this seems to be the same writing, but Adib, this is what I want you to do. I want you to sit in my office in front of me and I want you to rewrite the entire test. Adib at this point is still cocky as fuck and confident. He's like, "This is a Vince Ford movie." <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, of course I can do it." Like, but why are you making me do this? I need to study. And he's like, "I've got the math lesson now, and you're hampering my studies by making me do this <laughs> while I need to be studying. And soon we'll have the final exams, and who will be responsible for that?" And the principal says, "I will be responsible for that. I need you to rewrite this entire test in front of me right now." Anyways, Adib sits down. He's like, "Of course, easy." He sits down, he looks at his pen for five minutes, and he says, Okay, I didn't write this. (laughs) (laughs) He gets busted. And then, and then what happens is that now, like, it's it's obvious. Okay, so now the teacher's like, Okay, here's what's going to happen to Deep. You are not fit for year eight or year, whatever year it was. You're not fit for this. You'll have the final exams. If you fail, you will stay a grade behind. You will not progress to the next year. So Adib, Adib's like still confident as fuck for some reason. He's like, oh, what a stupid bitch. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, he came up with one of the most genius cheating systems. If he only put that much rigor and effort into gaming the system as he did into, say, like, Vegas, he'd he be, be less rich than what he is now. So. <laughs> anyway, final exams come. Adib does his exams, and we find out that Adib has failed every subject. Now we're thinking, oh shit, Adib is going to stay behind. <laughs> <laughs> After summer vacations, we go back to school, we're in the next grade, and guess who's in the next grade with us? Adib is right there. Because, and I don't know till this day if this is true, but I have no reason to doubt it. Adib says, oh yeah, they did try to fail me, but I got the president to call the principal. <laughs> and he did mean the president of some association. He meant the president of the country <laughs> to call the principal to say that you will not let this boy fail. And... And that, and until then, he kept progressing. Holy shit! And that is the day we found out that you can be illiterate, but as long as you're rich and powerful, you will not have a bad life, and you will continue to progress. That was. Oh, that's what school's for: learning lessons. <laughs> so, there you go. There you go. All the listeners. So I had to think about this one. <laughs> Okay, we There's ha- just one conclusion to that. God exists and he really likes a deep. The <laughs> <laughs> deep makes him laugh. <laughs> you know what else we've learned from this? Yeah. How, how I, everyone always comes up to me and goes, Oh, they you Maz at my school. Yeah, but so what? No, I think the, the real lesson from here is we all had an Adib in our school. <laughs> He's the king of it. And it's because it's just like, you know how if you have a billion dollars... If you're a nice person, that billion dollars just makes you nicer. But if you're a cunt, it just makes you a cunt to the power of a billion. <laughs> yeah. Here's a math lesson for you. 
<laughs> the, you're, you're listening in deep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but don't don't you think that also, mate? If you were funny dumbass, but you were billionaire, you were funny dumbass to the power of a billion, <laughs> man. Damn right, like, man. That is way better than anything I've ever heard with Hill Masters because he has the connections of one of the most powerful country <laughs> countries of the planet is his whim. <laughs> yes. Oh, God. So I think you know what the... You have to utilize a man that has to deal with rebellions in his country <laughs> and nuclear armaments. <laughs> to take time out of his day <laughs> to stop him from repeating <sighs> to call a school principal <gasps> and tell them <laughs> that this illiterate kid needs to be progressing to the next year or I will shut down your school <laughs> oh. well a deep at this point, is killing it in life. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the best part of this all. <laughs> and you know what? I honestly didn't think he deserved it until that story. <laughs> anyway, what no, the hell are we talking no, about? No, what I want to... I'm going to... Well, that one's a bit exhausted now. Yeah. So we're going to move to Tales of Pakistan. Yeah. Oh, oh thank you. I, I thought you never would. It, just, in the, just in the theme for that, while you do that, I'm going to get more of um the national pakistani pastime food for the story lollies continue yeah that's right that's what we really oh, really continue. get down yes <laughs> um it's so third world country lollies as well <laughs> ones that have pictures of fruit on the front of them with the word fancy <laughs> sprinkled it, it says fancy <laughs> and it's, it's I think I think you can they safely say fancy. that a lolly that only has one side that you can unravel and the other it's side not, like like it's a small dog bag. It's not fancy. It's not fancy. This is not it. fancy, but this is cheap. No, I actually really like this. See, like we're giving these out at the restaurant for free, so like you can't have like amazing candy. No, I like them. I like them. Anyway, Tales of Pakistan. So this is the time when I tell you that a deep. You've heard stories of Adib when he's billionaire a bit, Yilmaz. Billionaire Yilmaz when he's a bit older. This was Adib oh, as a kid in yep. high school. Yep. Bit of a cunt. So before I end up with like the actual story, I'll give you a bit of what Adib was about. Adib's mm-hmm. mission was to fuck with like any ratty high school kid to fuck with teachers as, as much as possible. Right, that's like most so that high was, schools. That was our. That was our. Yeah, exactly. Right, so like similar to yours, but he was extreme. So one, I'll give you one example. This isn't even the story, but so we had like this lab assistant guy who was walking with beakers on the school playground, or just actually not even the school playground, just outside the lab, which ended connected to the school playground. And a D basically runs as. Fast as he can, mm. he's running like Usain Bolt <laughs> and just barges right into the teacher. Man or woman? Man yeah. who falls at least 10 meters away. <laughs> what a king. He would have gone well in our school. No. And then, and then, and then you know, and the Crash worst that. thing is he, well in the sharks. he gets up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like a footy player. He gets up. Yeah. And, like, the fucking teacher's, like, you know, his elbows are, like, bloody and oh shit. Oh, my God. And Adib just went on top of him, so he's kind of fine. What? And then he gets up, and the teacher's like, what's wrong? And he was like, oh, sorry, sir, I slipped. <laughs> oh, my God. What the God. hell, Adib? <laughs> Dude, he's the, I think he's, like, he's Zeus. No, 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 he's, uh, <laughs> he's our Spanish friend, but the Pakistani version. Spanish friend, but Pakistani version. Geno, Geno. Oh. <clears throat> no, trust me. He is Yilmaz with a billion dollars. Really? You weren't here, Miss Lane. No, oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> the stories that this man has, rewind and listen to the pod. If yeah, you I'll listen. Because, yeah. man. Look, look, just think about it this way. If Yilmaz, when he went to the principal and went, Oh, they don't do shit for the 50th time. It's just to set up every single one of them. I've got it, I'll always be framed us. Like if he was doing that in the principal's office and then the principal said, I'm sorry, Yilmaz, it's not cutting it. You're getting the conduct card. And he's just like, wait, wait. And then picks up the phone and goes, hands the phone to the principal and it's the president of Pakistan. How the good is best that? thing I've ever heard. Ethnic retarded Richie Rich. Yeah. 
<laughs> we had a Dude, bold is- teacher. <laughs> Yeah. We had a bold teacher yeah. who was very conscious about the fact that he was bold. Yeah. He's writing, he was a chemistry teacher, he's writing some shit on the whiteboard. <laughs> I can see where this Adib is going. Adib <laughs> has a fucking rubber band. He stretches the fuck out of that rubber band and hits him right on the back of the head. And makes, it's like a tire fucking burst. He turns around. King. He's so pissed off, this teacher, that he says, fuck! And you know what Adib says? He just gets up, he's like, sir. You swore in class. I'm, I'm, I'm telling the principal. This is not appropriate. And the teacher is so scared. He's like, okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sit down. Right up. His skull is still... His head is still red. Anyways, oh, my God. But I'll, come to, I'll come to the final story. Oh, my God. This is the time... It's good that Bart did that. It's very, very good. <laughs> uh, he's just going up and up in my books. What's he... Uh, I, hope so, he's a, I hope he's like a Saudi prince now, but anyway. Uh, he lives in Dubai and he drives around he in a Bentley. Yeah, well, there you go. And pushes poor people on bicycles over for oh fun. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so he, this is this is this was pretty oh fucked my actually. God. So we have a field trip, <laughs> and we go. Guy, is he like? <clears throat> he just sounds like it's just what billionaires were in the West in the twenties. It's just, Pakistan yeah. is eighty years behind yes. the West. Holy shit! He's nailed it. Yeah. Anyway, so we have a field trip. So like the whole the whole grade mm. the year goes to. Our founding father's home, which is now a museum. So yeah. our version of George the Gandhi yeah. or George Washington or something, right? Mm. Dead for ages. So we're going to where we go to his I'm house. Like where this is going. He's, we have the. It's known as the Mahatta Palace, mm-hmm. and we're all queuing up. And you know, there's like there's those fucking red ropes through which there's things like his old pen, and you know all the his. And there's a competition going on amongst a few people mm. who can. Fuck up the most over here. Mm. Adib sometimes takes things to the next level. Mm. So we're walking. He notices that one of the teachers looking the other way. He jumps over the rope. No. He gets the personal diary no. of the founding father of the country, Holy whose face shit. is on every fucking piece <laughs> of currency. I wouldn't even the shit out of that no. and leaves it over there and comes back. No, no, no. I am not kidding you. No, this is a, it was in the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking god! Wait a sec, wait a sec. I have to clear something up here. I, this story doesn't check out. <sighs> I know we're talking about Pakistan. Yeah, I understand the scenario. You're telling me there wasn't even one. Shitty fucking VCR greased over camera on the fucking thing. Well, first of all, it is Pakistan. Secondly, <laughs> Not this what? was about 15 years ago, and there would have been... There's oh, yeah, no, pre, pre-cameras. No, but there... there <laughs> so I'm sure there would have been a camera... Dude, basically, they knew... They didn't know who it was that did it, mm. because the next day... First of all, our school got banned. From that museum <laughs> for the rest of well, it's our school, life. It's kind of light. Light. <laughs> because the thing is, because yeah. the next day it came into the newspaper, the, the like we were worried about like what eventually is going to... We were I loyal, but this is that. a felony. Yeah. Right? That, so, dude, that would get you life and... No. It's like, I don't know what the fuck it would be because we are like 14. So it's... so. Oh, like, what a fucking ballsy motherfucker. Go on. So the next, so now what happened? Like the next day, we've got like an emergency assembly in school where they're like, "This is this is not okay. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is out of the ordinary. You have ruined." <laughs> like it's the fucking personal diary of the founding father. Like I it had can't his handwritten it. notes. I mean, I don't know if I'm more shocked that it was like a felt, like bar holding like between him. The public and the book. I don't know if I'm more surprised by that the or the fact that he did it, but they're both very shocking facts. <laughs> the school tried to hush it down. They yeah. didn't even take an action for it because they were just like, it's, like we just need to like, this was a bad dream that we need to get mm. over. <laughs> it was in the newspaper. Like they that were in chill shock as well. Yeah, they were I mean, in chill that shock is, that too. Is, I can't, that is huge. No one ratted him out because that was like one of the things. So I can't, no they, one ratted anyone out. Oh my god! Because like, if you did rat someone out, then you were basically like, snitches get stitches. Did he regret it? No. Oh. You ask him today, and he'll laugh about it. He's like, so, oh yeah, that was fucked, wasn't it? So <laughs> he's just a rebel. He's a piece of history. <laughs> so he's just he's just an anarchist. He has no. No, no, no. Well, at that time, he's Bart was. Simpson. Yeah, yeah. He just like uh, th- 
the point of our existence no, 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 was no, no. to he's, fuck with the I get that, but like fuck authority no, as I, much as possible. Would you have had the balls to do that? I would not have. Dude, no one. Adib is a fucking mental kid because he's friends with like his dad's friends with like the president, so he thinks he's invincible. He's a billionaire living in a oh. land of peasants. Oh my! He thinks God. he's above and the he's, law. He's probably retarded, <laughs> slightly retarded. Sure. <laughs> dude, dude, like, doesn't he not know how to write? Yeah, yeah, he can't read. I mean, <laughs> case closed. <laughs> And how good is it that he, like, destroyed a journal? Oh, as well? the irony. <laughs> the, he destroyed it because he was angry. He couldn't read it. <laughs> oh, my God. <gasps> it just would have no uh, respect or regard in that man's mind at all. It couldn't. There's I no way it possibly yeah. could. Dude, this is, this is, like, one of the craziest stories I've ever heard. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's, yeah. it's like, fucking I, bizarre. So, what? So, so, there was no repercussions? None whatsoever. Like, I can't believe, I can't believe, like... Not even a detention, you know. So good, is, just the principal came up and said, this is pretty embarrassing. Let's forget it. Sweep anyway, up. pull your socks up to your knees. <laughs> Dude, like, I, 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 look, I really should leave this point be, but I have to paint, I have to paint the, paint, like, I'm setting the scene here, just imagine this, right? <clears throat> There's a man that's a security guard that works at this museum. He's been there for like 40 years. No, there's no security guard. Okay, let me start explaining to you the country that I come from. (laughs) There's no security (laughs) guard. There's a man who's maybe 150 years old who stands right at the gate who was probably the same security guard during the founding father time. (laughs) There's no security cameras because... Okay, look, the state is... It doesn't have a lot of money. <laughs> One. And these are... Just pay a peasant to stare at the book. It no. could hold your society's fabric together. But it's have not a just guy the book stare. that's over there. There's like a few things. Have There's... a few guys. There's a lot of cunts in Pakistan. But no one suspects school children to be... Do- the school children but are that's always the nature considered of a security to be like guard. the most harmless people. But the nature of a man that stares at a book for a living is they stare at everyone. What? No, but no one's staring at the I book. I should run that country. No, but I'm just saying they should have had one man standing next to the They book. should, but who's going to pay that man? They're that broke. Okay, fair enough. Well, look, it's not that they're it's broke. Just, like, look, it's yeah, just the, not the, a priority the for the government. here is if you're going to get someone to stare at a book all day, you need to get Australian lifeguards <laughs> because they really mistrust teenagers. They hate just, school dude, kids. If you got a, if you got the, the guys, a couple of guys from Nippers at that place, that book would yeah, outlive yeah, civilization. Yeah, for sure. That book would be the one thing that stands. <laughs> And Adib's ears would hurt to this day <laughs> as they dragged him out. <laughs> they, they have no regard for ears. <laughs> Dude, amazing though, amazing. So it was, it was a bit extreme. Like every- shit. I, 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 like, dude, I am not, pa- I'm not Pakistani, and I feel like. He's defiled my flag. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't even understand. Like, yeah. I, like I'm not. Uh, like, I, I, I just. Disrespectful, like, if it? it is the if most it's, sacrilegious it's, act yeah. I've ever heard yeah. <laughs> ever in my in my life. Like, if, if even like, and I've read like a few chapters from the Bible. You know? <laughs> this is the perfect segue to the next segment because it is a tale from Pakistan. Oh, <laughs> damn. Alibaba. There you go. Which also oh, has this is a smooth the greatest morals you could ever imagine. How many German <laughs> shepherds get killed this time? Oh, God. It, it's even worse. Like, it's... Oh. And I just remembered this. <clears throat> I remember this because, like, I was driving and I saw this guy on a bicycle and he was going and he almost kind of fell because he... Anyway, it was just that he didn't, but like, but that's what remembered me. That a deep story. Mm. This is one of the most fucked things that happened. So a deep, oh, and Jordan knows this. One of a deep's fucking hobbies was to push over peasants oh <laughs> who God. were riding on bicycles oh, oh, oh. <laughs> while he's uh, like, he just sticks his head out from the. Uh, the windows, and then he would just push someone oh my God. onto the fucking. Hey, look, he knows console. funny. Great. He knows funny. It honestly is that memory that made Mister Burns laugh for ten days straight <laughs> yeah. of him crippling an Irishman in a bumper car. <laughs> so <laughs> I love that that is a real life thing. <laughs> so, so this. This is so evil. It's it's in no. This is evil. What is about to follow? Oh shit! I know where this is going. 
So, so, uh, so, so that wasn't even part of the whole story. So, Adib liked to do that, push off people mm-hmm. that were mostly like servants working in the houses that were going from like, I don't know, to the markets back to the house, like taking whatever like vegetables or things for the house. God. And so I'm, so I'm driving, Adib sitting next to me, and then Adib all of a sudden decides that he wants to start pushing people. So I'm like, Adib, can we not fucking do this? <laughs> so Adib's like, okay. Here's a better idea. Would you, would it make you feel better if instead of me pushing them, I was just egging them? And I was like, the original egg boy. And I, I was like, actually, that that would be and better. An absolute legend as well. <laughs> so Punishing, we, yeah, dog the poorest people. That's right. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but it was better than pushing someone egg. onto the concrete <laughs> pavement. Hmm? It's better than pushing someone into concrete pavement that could potentially kill them. They're both pretty. Bad. So I was like, okay, the egg bit is fine. So he's like, all right, just stop over. I'm going to get like a few eggs. So he gets like, <laughs> so he gets, <laughs> what the hell? So he bro? gets around six eggs, right? <sighs> yeah. A good dozen. And then I'm like, and I'm uh, half and I'm, and I'm driving. And then he's like, sort of, so what he does is he, he's sitting on to the window, sticking like his entire body out. And whoever's like riding a cycle on the side, he would hit his uh, he would hit the egg on their head, and then we would egg just boy. drive away. So he hit the original egg boy, and then his eggs finished because there were only six of them. He had this because we had just come Don't from our mad rocks. tuitions. He had like a register <laughs> that he would a what? I don't even know. He never studied. He just came there, cracked a few jokes, and left and paid money. One time, also, he walks in and. Um, Anyway, I'll, I'll talk about this. So, so he, so he, so what he decides to do is there's this one poor fellow who's just riding his bicycle and he gets out of the window. And I, and I didn't know that he had, he's run out of eggs. He takes his hard register. What's a register? It's like, um, like a book. Oh, right. But like, what do you say? Like a notebook, but like harder. Like a folder. Like a hardcover book. A textbook. Yeah, like a textbook, but right. like not. Yeah, anyways. So something like a textbook, okay? <laughs> oh, I can see where this is going. So he hit, No, you don't know where this is going. What? Oh, so God. So then he hits the man so hard <laughs> on his back. Oh, my God. Jesus. That, that is he so- falls over in the process. He loses his, uh, his book, his textbook as well. <laughs> so now we're driving away. And he's saying, we've got to go back. I need to get that register back. <laughs> and I'm like... You're a fucking moron. I am not doing this. It's like, don't worry. I'm here, right? Who's going to mess with us? I really need that book. Uh, can you just like turn it around? I was like, man, we just hit that man so hard. Can we not do that? So I was like, no, 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 just turn it around. So, okay, so this is what's going to happen. I'm going to drive and we'll ask him if he promises not to beat us up and if we can give us the register. Like from the car. From the car. So then, anyways, we turn around. Right. It's just like it's just like an episode of Felix the Cat. We turn around, and we just go. By this time, he just got up again, and he's brushing shit. And then a D boss him was like, "Hey, can I have my book back?" And the guy <laughs> goes, "Such like, an idiot." And the guy he's goes, ballsy. "Yeah, yeah, come back, take your book." Like so, so Adib's like, "Okay, stop the car. I'm gonna go." I'm like, "Dude, this is a fucking trap, you yeah. idiot." Yeah. He. How old was this guy? Wait, who the guy that got beaten the, or the, the, the attacky? The attacky was around in his thirties, okay. uh, and Adib's like seventeen. So, um, so, so, so Adib's like, I'm gonna go and get the rest, and come with me. I was like, dude, this is a trap. He's gonna start beating the shit out of yeah. us. Adib's like, no, no, it's fine. Like, don't worry, you're with me. I'll handle this. So I'm like, he? fucking Adib. We go there. The man hands his hands the book back. And says, uh, look, I'm having a bad day. I think this book will, might be more important for you. So here's your book. So he just gave the fucking book back. And I'm so confused. I'm like, man. What do you mean I'm having a bad day? Yeah, because you got smacked by no, his book. And do not just that. So also then I was like, man, you're like the nicest guy I've ever come across in my entire life. What's up? Why are you having a bad day? And he's like, I just came from a village to find work here. Um, it's been three days. I'm not getting any work. I'm like kind of hungry. 
And uh, and then I just got beaten up by you guys. Oh. So at this point, I'm so low that I don't even care. Um, you guys can have your book back, and I'm sorry if I have like uh, oh. messed with you in any which that way. Is, I'm like, that is dude, so sad. That is the saddest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, that's horrible. And so I gave him a hundred rupees, and then we left. <laughs> What's that like? Four bucks, right? That's like a dollar. <laughs> Jesus Christ! That's not even enough for a meal. That's not. That's enough for a meal in Pakistan. Ah, shit. Man. Maybe two if you're willing to go really? vego. <laughs> Fuck. That's, Which, let's be honest, even though he's sad, starving, he wouldn't. That's the saddest story. <laughs> that's like the saddest story I've ever heard, I think. Yeah. I thought that a D would offer him a job or something yeah. and then later on lock him in a closet for slightly pissing him off. But why would he say, come and work at my house or some shit? Uh, because, I don't know, Adib's, like, not a nice person. Oh, I guess, like, I, I, haven't I made that clear has already? That guy, has that That's guy- amazing. So, Adib... <laughs> The guy that upgrades his Lexus every six months didn't offer any money. This, oh, yeah, no, oh, I, I gave him a hundred rupees. Oh my! And, and he was more concerned with his book, which he could easily buy back. Which no, which is like you, because he's an illiterate man. I don't even know. I think he wanted to just get the rush yeah. of like being able to take Does that he live back. In Dubai now, this guy. Yeah, he lives he in Dubai. E- drives around a Bentley. Has he ever and- got his comeuppance? Does the boy ever? Cry oh yeah, actually, no, he is. He he now. This is sad, and this is going to ruin Adib's image, but he now just cries all the time. So that's what happens. Because, uh, did I tell you this, Jordan? So I told you how he got married he recently, right? He lost his right? snake too. His wife used to beat the shit out of him. Oh, Adib, my God. The man who beat everyone else up in the bedroom was a wimp, and his wife would beat the shit out of him and have just divorced him. And now he just cries his in his cousin, room right? all day. <laughs> <laughs> this is his cousin. What, 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 where's she from? <sighs> also from Pakistan. It's his, it's his first cousin. He no. married his first cousin. Oh, I thought you were joking. No. The Tales of Pakistan. <laughs> right. So this was when I was 12 years old. A bunch of us had just... Um, there were about 12 Killed kids. a bunch of dogs. <laughs> Uh, going. Well, that goes uh, without saying. Yeah, that goes without saying. It was a normal day. That was the exam. <laughs> we passed. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and to celebrate, we went out and killed a midget. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right, go on. So, um, so, so we finished our exam, and even though we're fucking 12 or 13, one of us has a car and is driving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rock on. Is this in District 9? Yeah, this is a District Defense 9. Defense Housing Authority 50 or whatever. So what we decide to do is, let's start egging people. All oh, right. Yeah, fucking I up. mean, a what classic. else do you do when you're 12? It's a classic. You know, sometimes you throw water bombs if you're feeling generous. <laughs> yeah. So the rule was, so there's about 12 of us in one car. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> so what happened? So there's one guy driving. There's no one sitting next I to him. I bet by car he means motorbike. No. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> No, it was what a Toyota is this Corolla. Country? It was. A, so the, oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the the car down from a bus, Toyota Corollas. Oh, okay, <laughs> the, go on. The choice of so substitute teachers. So I, I'm trying to build the image, here and I am not kidding. No, no, it's worse. There's is one it? guy driving, and he's by himself. Are this are owns they daily the car. sandstorms there? In Pakistan? No, but it happens. Right. That got okay. to do Once with the story. I'm just trying to make the uh, the imagery. I need the imagery. Is there a I think sandstorm? He's mistaking Karachi with the book Dune. <laughs> What do you mean? It's the or same thing. Case. You're right. You're right. <laughs> is there a I'm difference? sorry. I made the mistake. Yeah, is there one difference? No. Giant worms yeah. fucking jumping out through the sand. I assume that's what it's like. So we. So there's one guy driving. There's three people on the passenger seat, and I'm one of them. There's about. <laughs> there's about Fuck. six people on the back seat. Mm. Then there's about four people in the car boot. And the boots open, of course. And they're Four. all, yeah, they're they're hanging their their legs. Jeez, are- I thought there was a difference between Pakistan and India. <laughs> no, there isn't. <laughs> it was just like go on, it, go it was on. the Sorry only it was the only car because all of the other guys had cars, but they, including me, but we we would need to take our drivers with us. Oh yeah, right. But one of my friends was the only guy. That was allowed to drive the car with no supervision whatsoever. And because we were egging, that was the ideal thing. Because you're, there was a fear that your driver may tell your parents that you, the kids were egging or whatever. So, <laughs> this car is fucking full. And it's barely moving at this point. <laughs> and Jesus. we all have like at least a dozen eggs each. 
<laughs> now the 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 rule was <laughs> the rule was that you only throw eggs at uh, pedestrians mm. because so you can drive away. Yeah. Never hit. A cop. A car. No, not a cop. Oh, yeah, a car. <laughs> Never no, they'd be fine with hitting cops. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're all rich kids in Pakistan. Yeah. Right, cops, right. The cops are fine. They're just like, you just have to give them some money. Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. That is sweet. Yeah, but like, never don't hit a car, and that was the clear. Well, it makes sense because they're just going to drive after you, right? Yeah, they're going to drive after us, and we're fucking kids, kids right? And there's fifty of you in yeah, a fucking car. Yeah, there's one car, and the car's like moving at. It's 30 like when K's clowns. Max. It's like when clowns, you know, ten clowns get out of a car. You know, it's like that whole <laughs> yeah, gag. That was pretty much it. Yeah. So uh, what happens is, so we're we're like we've been egging whoever's like the pedestrians or whatever, and it was all fun, hunky dory, until one of the the dipshits that was sitting in the boot of the car. <laughs> decides to throw an egg at one of the cars that was coming from the opposite direction. Wait a sec, he's in the boot. Yeah, he's in the boot, but the boot's open and he's throwing eggs from oh, the Oh, for boot. fuck's sake. That's, <laughs> hey, that's hardcore. What do you mean? That's, dude, I don't know if this ever crossed your mind, but that's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Even by my standards. Dude, you hit one bump, uh, you fly out. Yeah, that, that would happen. <laughs> yeah. Damn, I feel like Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> you hit one bump and he's out of there. <laughs> <laughs> a Pakistani cab or what? <laughs> um, okay, that's crazy. So the boots open. You're the fucking boots open, driving. There's four guys and sitting, and, and you're and he's throwing, throwing stuff eggs. out of a moving yeah. car, and yeah. the boots open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the boots open. <laughs> um, so <laughs> you had a way cooler childhood than me. But so go on. What, what happens is one of the fucking morons decides to hit the windscreen of another car that was going in the opposite direction. His rationale was, yeah. well, we're just going to speed away because it'll because take ages to make a Yui, yeah. right? Yeah. So he does that. Yeah. I actually see that egg going right in front of me. And I was like, this is going to, this is going to end badly. The guy who he hits is in a, is in an SUV and he is pissed off. So all he, <laughs> he goes straight and I can see him oh, turning, uh, shit. making a Yui. I tell my friend who's driving the car, fucking bold we need to get the fuck out of here so what we do is <laughs> he, he like somehow the car manages to go past 60 k's and we go into one of these streets oh my god and we park the car and now i tell them we all need to disperse <laughs> everyone good tactic dude. In, yeah dude at this point i'm always like i always become the director at this point this is how we avoid situations yeah so everyone go in separate uh, separate ways right yeah. and it was all working fine uh, we were, I ended up going to one of them shisha bars with one of the guys. <laughs> we were sitting there until things were cooling off. Damn, I and it was ma- fine for 12 year olds to be at a shisha yeah, bar yeah. as well. Hey, we I'm got a discount, you- really. Like- <laughs> <laughs> you got the kids' meal. Yeah, at, at, this, the kid- at, at this point, I'm imagining when you go into like the shisha bar, it's like. Maxwell smart music and you got fake moustache like bam bam like it's like <laughs> like nineteen sixties cop yeah, show yeah. you're like bam, like, bam, bam, like bam, 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 where it's really camp like I imagining like one of those Bollywood Indian movies where the camera zooms in really quick on your face like bam, 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 and you're just kind of looking around like Dude, so it's good. remarkable how you you're able to guess the exact surroundings the vibe <laughs> yeah. that's just what I'm vibing but yeah go on yeah go that on. and sometimes Bon Jovi would play. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Bon Jovi was during the chase scene, you know? <laughs> okay, so then what happens is uh, one of the guys get a call on his um, cell phones, which were also kind of rare at the time. Not rare, but we were young. Yeah. So he gets a call that one of the fucking morons is caught. Yep. By the guy who's, who's driving the SUV. If, and- you, if you get caught but in that scenario, hypothetically, like the guy's going to like, you know... In Australia, he'd he'd like wrangle your neck and be like, "I'm taking you to the police." But in Pakistan, would he just kill you? Well, that, that's that's the story. Okay, Hold okay, on. go on, go on. So, uh, <laughs> yes. So, so <laughs> sorry to jump ahead. So I I I argue that <clears throat> fuck it. He he's, he's the gone. one who got caught. He's the weak link. Let Survival of the fittest, baby. We all go. Yeah, let you him have go. eleven then, more friends. But then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exactly. let him, yeah, let him go. But then what happens is that um, he made his bed. No, he's thing. like he's like he, he and the poor guy who got caught was the one who was arguing. I don't think egging is a good idea. Perfect, guys. exactly. That's exactly who oh, should be keep so, from South Park just, gets caught. That's so. He was fun. like, so he is like a rich kid uh, who. Who was new to the school and was just trying to be cool? Yeah, uh, by hanging out with the rowdy oh, kids, and, and he oh, and he gets caught. So now he calls damn. us and he says, 
Um, is he crying? He, yeah, he's crying. <laughs> he's crying. And he says, like, guys, can you please come here? He's like, he's asking for the guy who threw the egg yeah. to come to him. Damn, so he's holding him hostage. Yeah, he's holding, he's holding him hostage. Him hostage. <laughs> now, the guy who threw the egg is long gone. We don't know where the fuck he is. We later on found Shit. out that right after we dispersed, he got one of the tuk-tuks and went home. <laughs> <laughs> Genius. Dude, this is <sighs> fucking, uh, that, you know, it's like a 60, it's a 70s fucking um, cop show. It is. It's it's so, it is. Tell me a wire pedal was going, back, 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 as he was driving it's away. So, oh, fucking talk to so, it's amazing that Buddhism applies everywhere except Pakistan. Where it just hits, it's just like that's opposite land and then karma just goes in reverse. <laughs> Who that <laughs> died in Pakistan? <laughs> that makes so much sense. I talk, talk. <laughs> Dude, okay, can I just say something? For what, th- I don't know if, if, if you can, I don't want, I'm not trying to be, I don't know if it's a third world country, but let's say hypothetically, whatever, as a broad statement. And Pakistan is a third okay, world country. Whatever, it's as third as you can oh, okay. get. Dude, I have to say, whatever Four, third cu- countries. Uh, lack in like health, health education and standard of living, they make up for in like hilarity and fun times. That's that's true, I guess. And also freedom to do whatever I the fuck you want. I would prefer hospitals every now and then. To yeah, a hospital's mad, but you can't. There's no, no, we, there's no tuk tuks no, in the this first is, world. This, this is the thing. That you, <laughs> <laughs> but this is what you don't get. We had hospitals. It was only the poor yeah. people. Who it's the divide. It's the divide. You yeah. had the best of both worlds. Why did you come and here? I actually, <laughs> I actually have like a, a story about. Uh, then I keep going. Go fuck, to- here's another tale of Pakistan about like. Me. Give us two. Give us two uh, in a well, row. Well, if we've got time, I'll get, get into the next okay. one. But that was more of a sobering one. So, so anyway, so so what happens is one the guy who got caught, his best friend is with me, and I'm trying to argue. The guy who threw the egg, there is no fucking way he's coming back. So we're, we're going to the hell's den. Uh, like, are you guys wall. prepared to do this? And the guy who got caught, his best friend was with me and he was like, I think we have to go. And I was like, well, you have to go. Mm. I don't have to. Anyways, the consensus <laughs> was that we need to go because he's literally being held hostage. Yeah. So we go there. This is like a, the guy who was driving the SUV, he's about, he's probably our, he, he's our age now. Uh-huh. Right, so he's like in late twenties, thirty, early thirties or something, right? And wait, we, wait, in the now, yeah, like what the age that we are now? He was that age when I was twelve years old. Oh, I see, I see, yeah, yeah. So he was probably okay. He was probably thirty, and we were twelve, thirteen. Gotcha, gotcha. So, anyways, we go there, and he's standing there, and he's holding the one of my friends uh, by the collar. And he's just like, and I, and we go there and, and I'm like, um, look, we're incredibly sorry. The thing is, we didn't want to throw this egg at you. The guy who threw the egg mm. at you and that's true. is now gone. And that's true. Yeah. And that's true. Uh, the fact still remains that we were throwing eggs, not just, just not at him yeah, yeah. Like, and <laughs> others who were you too still, weak to do it. Yeah, I don't know. You still weren't. No, he was he aware like, of that? Yeah, he probably was. Because we still, were just like, you, like extra flying all over. You still the place. weren't outstanding, you know, model citizens. Yeah, yeah, no, no, clearly not. But neither was this guy, which you'll find out. So then what happens is then we're like, look, uh, so he's like, call that motherfucker, right? He's just really aggressive. <laughs> he's off, like, yeah. he's just like, call that motherfucker. I'm going to fuck his mom, blah, blah, blah. I love that. That's another thing. Another observation just quickly about third world countries. And, and this sort of counts Croatia because it's, you know, it's, it's like growing and like, but it's, it's, the economy is still shit. Third world countries have the most brutal fucking swear, swear dude, words. so much. Brutal. And it's brutal. But it's almost always fucking your mum and yeah. sister. Dude, there's a casual swear word in Croatian. Extremely casual. Children say it. And it's like your mother's, you know, sc- like I'm going to get a dog to screw your mum. In way more explicit terms. So, yeah, another observation. But go yeah. on. Yeah, no, so, <laughs> well, so thank then, you for that contribution, right. Mr. So then what happens is... <laughs> Any chat. So my friends fucking push me. more information about the mayor of London, you prick. <laughs> <laughs> go on. So my friends fucking push me towards this guy. They're saying, can you, can you talk to this man? Um, so I was like, look, the guy is gone. We're incredibly sorry. Yeah. Uh, if you want, we can clean your windscreen because we just want to try to get out of the situation yeah. at this point. The guy's like, 
Fuck you, bring that guy here. Shit. I was like, no, the guy is not gonna he's, he's not picking up his phone. He's on a tuk tuk. He's, he's, he's gone. By this time, he's like, he's hiding in his room. So <laughs> so then what happens is, and I'm not kidding, <sighs> he takes out a gun. Oh shit. From he had it in his fucking gun bolster. Like it was holster. Wild Wild West. Yeah, holster. Oh man. And he takes out a gun. Fuck. And he keeps it on the guy that kept arguing. Uh. Of like, no, let's not throw eggs, guys. He pulls it on him. He pulls it on him. For some reason, he doesn't pull it on me, even though I'm the chief negotiator in this situation. Can I just ask? Was it like a was it like a modern Glock or like a Magnum? It was like a, a. It was a dude. I don't know. Like it was, was a, a pistol. cowboy style gun with the no, six no, no, bullets. No, 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 no. It was the nine one, the pistol. Uh, it was black and color. Okay, gotcha. Um. So now I'm just like I'm Freaking pissing. Out. I'm I'm pissing my pants. Cause like I'm like fuck. He's gonna kill. Are we him. gonna get shot? Yeah. And what happens is, oh my God. when I when I when I was trying to make that call to the tuk tuk guy because I didn't have a phone. Like my parents wouldn't allow me to have a cell phone at this point. But the guy who was uh, the guy who uh, was uh, had the gun on his head. I knew he had a phone because he was like a rich spoiler kid. So I was like, give me your phone. I'm going to call the guy from the tuk-tuk. So while I take out his phone, <laughs> the guy who had the gun sees that that's a really expensive phone. Oh. It was, I still remember. I don't know how, like how big phones a were Nokia here. Nokia 808. It was a Nokia 6600. And back in the day, that was a big phone. It was like one of the first phones I mean, with a camera. I think like even- oh right yeah I know exactly what you're talking about okay I so don't know. then I don't the know. guy says uh, I'll take that. I- I'm gonna take this phone he takes the phone and now because he has a gun I'm like man just think of it as a hold up right it's like I was like yeah sure you can take the phone can I ask are there people seeing this yeah yeah, yeah. there's a lot of people just seeing ignoring this. It? just ignoring it what what the fuck? boys will be boys. <laughs> Let's get some shawarma. Um, go on. So then, so then the the, the guy whose what? phone it is is just like, no, 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 not my phone, sir. Please, not my phone, not my phone. He doesn't my, care. <laughs> the guy's gonna get killed. He's like, he's like, my 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 parents are gonna kill me. You can kill me here. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, I, I love, it. dude. That's so good to know the list of priorities. What's scarier than being held up by a strange man with a gun is Pakistani parents beating your ass. <laughs> and then he's like, Fuck. he's just saying, like, just, 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 please, not my phone. I didn't throw the egg. I swear I didn't throw the egg. Give me, please give me my phone. And at this point, I just tell him, just take the phone and go. <laughs> so he gets into his car. We didn't even have to. And I was just saying, man, we didn't even have to clean the windshield or nothing. And the guy who lost his phone just started crying right on the street. Like he had <laughs> lost his family in a car accident or something. Oh, oh my God. And then, and then we, uh, and then he was just like, Boy, I need to get this phone. And I was like, I know a guy that can probably help you out. He's a bit of a gangster. He can, he might be able to get your phone. Get it back. You get it back. But that was just me trying to convert him so he stops crying. I didn't know anyone. Actually. Like, <laughs> oh, but, okay. but I just like. Damn, you had street smarts, dude. But so anyway, go on. he's so good. Then, anyways, he never ended up getting his phone and he lost that phone. And some guy got an egg on his windscreen, but he got like a nice phone out of it. And that was the story. Holy, Holy hell. Shit. Dude, that was great. Uh, I love how it's just another day in the life of. It, it's I love just, how that story is. Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. Uh, <laughs> dude, it's it's just Tintin, but more hectic. It's so good. <laughs> yes. Dude, I would read your... Write a, bi- write a biography.